everybody this is emmy thomas i'm here with cassie cassie i'm going to ask you the question i ask everybody what is it like to be you uh that's a great question um for me having autism and ASPD is very lonely so it's a very lonely existence um okay <laughs> okay um so yeah like confusion recently i went on a date and i was just like utterly confused because i told him that uh physical attraction isn't necessary for me and emotional attraction isn't necessary for me i need a mental connection and he didn't understand that um he thought i was calling him ugly when that's not the case um and it's crazy cuz like anyone would be like well we need an emotional connection we need you know physical connection but i just need someone to like understand me in the way that i think and that would turn me on more than a face is that what you mean by like a mental connection is that they kind of are do you need them to be on the same page with you like they also kind of think in similar ways at least some of them or or is it just uh, that they understand where you're coming from i guess just to understand where i'm coming from to put my themselves in my shoes they don't have to think the same as me or have the, even the same condition um i just need someone to not get offended because there's this stereotype of uh people with ASPD like wanting to you know hurt people and i mean like it's not a stereotype but like obviously if someone says hey do you want me me to take you on a date obviously i don't want to hurt that person in any type of way the complete opposite i want them to like me so <laughs> when yeah so yeah, like, like when why they're... are you going what, i i always wonder about that too people like are like oh and and do you think, you know, would you like to murder somebody? And it's like, you know, I don't know, like, why? But that's a really good point. Yeah. Why would you be going on a date with somebody if you wanted to hurt them? But I guess people, I mean, people are going to maybe counter with this and say, uh, you know, that they've dated somebody that hurt them. Who's like yeah, a sociopathic. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's when I try to explain to people, at least the people that I try to go on dates with, um, just fun fact, I've never been on a second date. I've on I've been on perpetual first dates, but never a second date. Your whole life. Um, yeah. And I'm 31 and I've never had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So that has been affecting me, you know, mentally um, and just my self-esteem because like uh, this one girl, she was like, oh, well, you have ASPD. So I don't believe anything you say on your channel. Okay. And I told her, it's okay to not believe yeah, yeah. I was like, it's okay to not believe anything I say on my channel. But the two things that I, you know, would never lie about is like essay and like my status is like technically a female incel because that's nothing to brag about. And then also like that is a turnoff for most men. Like when I tell them about my trauma or when I tell them that I've never had a boyfriend, they automatically see that as a red flag. So it's not something that I would lie about uh -huh. yeah what was the first so thing that you said that you would never lie about and you said something like SA oh yeah 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 um sorry I don't mean for this to be like a dark um what is it called uh video but yeah I am a survivor of SA and SA is sexual abuse sexual assault a sexual yeah. assault okay I'm just like throwing out guess I have heard oh. it called SA yeah, I use abbreviations for YouTube because I know how strict they are with their guidelines. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, like, there's some people that are like, oh, well, if you've been through SA, then, like, why do you want a boyfriend? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, because I've only had negative experiences with men. Like, I mm -hmm. would like a positive experience with a man. Yeah. So, yeah. That's interesting. And uh, so you said you started by saying lonely. So is there something about let's say you did have like a, a mental kind of connection with somebody where you felt like they could kind of cognitively understand where you're coming from, that would feel less lonely to you? Yes, that would feel a lot less lonely to me. I've had a few men like cognitively understand where I was coming from, but they thought that I wanted a relationship with them. And those guys, I didn't want a relationship with. I just wanted to connect mentally because I met this other guy. His name is Zach. And I'm not going to say his full name, but you could probably guess his full name. Um, and um, <laughs> he had autism and ASPD also. And like I connected with him mentally. 
but like he always thought can i use um like uh like cuss words I, i'm fine with it i guess what okay. what is the worst that could happen is that this gets demonetized or something <laughs> yeah yeah so like he always thought that i wanted to fuck him uh -huh. and um uh towards the end of our relationship um we were drinking and um he got me really drunk and he started like touching me and i just was like sitting on my hands laughing because i didn't know what to say i didn't want to know what to do because i was inebriated and once he realized that i wasn't reacting like i wasn't you know touching him back or kissing him or anything he stopped mm -hmm. and um I wouldn't call that essay. I would just say that that was horrible, horrible judgment on his part um, and a misunderstanding. Um, but then after that, he ended our friendship because I think he realized that like, I just wanted to be friends. So because I was so clingy, because I found someone that connected with me on an intellectual, you know, cognitive mental level of just, you know, being a weirdo, you know, having autism, not that everyone with autism is a weirdo, or just like not understanding emotions, he thought like that I wanted him more than a friendship. And then the guys that I want more than, you know, I want to be more than friends with, um, they never want me. Actually, most of them are gay. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and I, I missed this about Zach. Did you say that there's something up with Zach too? Zach has a, a, a mental health diagnosis yeah. or something? Yeah, he has autism. He's diagnosed autistic. Um, and he confided in me that he is on the spectrum of psychopathy. Oh. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm not saying that he's a horrible person for what he did um, because we were both drunk. It just sucks that like when I told him I didn't want something sexual, he never believed me until like he tried and, you know, there wasn't a reaction. And then the times that I was with guys and I wanted something sexual, they were like, I'm gay. So, yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Do you think that uh, I mean, like, do you see a pattern or like why it is that uh, that the, they're often gay? The ones that you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was talking to my therapist about this and she said that because um, I was like, oh, I think my picker's broken. She's like, I don't think your picker's broken. I think you intentionally like put yourself in, you know, trap. You're romantically attracted to men that will not be romantically attracted to you because yeah. you're trying to protect yourself, even if that's oh. subconscious. And I was like, maybe, or maybe they're just, you know, sensitive and kind and attractive and like, you know, they just happen to be gay. But I don't know. Maybe she's right. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to come back on once you figure that out and let us know. <laughs> we'll be yeah. like cliff, cliff hung <laughs> until then. Which is it? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was in Florida. I was actually living with a guy that was sexually attracted to men, but emotionally attracted to women. It was a very interesting dynamic. I currently live in New York now because the, the friendship was great, but it turned toxic towards the end. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I I met this uh, woman who was like the same way that she was like more, I think she said sexually attracted to men. But she kind of said that she realized that she was like, uh, you know, didn't really have emotional connections with men. And she only had emotional connections with women. So then she's like, all right, I just have to be with a woman. I guess in those situations, I wonder, like, what did what do they do? Do they just prioritize one or the other, maybe? Well, he was, well, I can't. I can't say his business because I think one or two of the people that follow me know him. So I cannot um, disclose like what he does in his personal life. But yeah, I mean, it was definitely interesting. Um, but yeah, the guy that I recently went on a date with was straight, but he was neurotypical. He was not oh. neurodivergent. And I do think that, um, I think that autism is a spectrum, but I also think that sociopathy is a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking about this, you know, earlier off camera well yeah. yeah on camera but off the record or whatever um and yeah I think that there are people that have aspects of ASPD but they you know suppress it or mask it and like usually I get along better with those people but then when I tell them about my diagnosis they run away you know and this guy he didn't well actually towards the end of the date he kind of just walked away but um sorry <laughs> my phone is on books um, but yeah, like he, he just felt uncomfortable because I told him like, you know, I don't know if I'm capable of love 
but I would still, if we were, you know, together or whatever, I would still respect you. I would still, you know, be a good girlfriend, be a good wife, you know, be a good mother. And he couldn't understand that. Like, if, mm-hmm. if you don't love me, why, why would you be willing to be my girlfriend? Why would you be willing to marry me? And love is not a requirement for a relationship for me. Mm-hmm. It, I would love to be in love. I've never been in love. Um, but the requirement that I need is I need someone that is uh, smarter than me <laughs> because I'm sapiosexual. Yeah. Um, and like, I'm always confused because I don't really understand body language. I don't really understand people. So if I had like a boyfriend or husband that was, you know, smarter than me, like he could help me nav- navigate the world. And this guy has a PhD and um, he couldn't understand that like someone could you know, date someone else without a physical attraction or an emotional attraction. That's not a concept that he could get. And it just, I don't know, it made me feel really bad because, you know, I would have liked to date him, but yeah, I've been on a ton of single, a ton of first dates. Yeah. Uh, So, I mean, people who don't know the word sapiosexual, I think it's just like, uh, like your attraction is, is based at, at least like a lot in like their their mind right is is that a good definition yeah yes yes yeah um yeah yeah I'm attracted to to the mind um like obviously I wouldn't be with someone that I thought was like a hundred percent unattractive but then I'm not a conventionally attractive female so looks don't really matter that much to me it's interesting to even think about that because as you say that about you, I'm like, is that true? <laughs> is that, you know? Well, I've I've been single all my life, so I feel I feel like it is true because if it wasn't, then I would be married. Hmm. I don't know if the logic follows there. I mean, there are plenty of like attractive people. Is isn't it true that Jennifer Aniston? I mean, I think most people think that she has like like above average looks or whatever, but she's not married. Well, that's by choice. Oh. Um, she is single by choice. I am not single. I'm I'm single and childless, but not by choice. Um, I used to call myself a femme cell. I actually used to be part of the femme cell community, mm-hmm. but I no longer identify as a femme cell. Okay, but I mean, even Jennifer Aniston, though, I uh, like like the I mean, this dude Zach or whatever. You probably could have married Zach. It sounded like. Oh no no no. Um, but you could have, like, if you wanted to, you know, so I don't know. I, that's what I don't understand about your, and maybe you can just explain it to me, you know, like, what does it mean to be by choice or not by choice? Because it sounds like you've had instances in which, you know, if you were like, uh, and maybe this, this is interesting way to kind of explore, what does it mean to could and not be able to, (laughs) to you, (laughs) because Mm -hmm. like, if I, you know, let's say this, you know, let's say I were in your situation, uh, and I don't know, I mean, you just told me what you told me or something, but let's say I had kind of a Zach type or whatever, who I was not interested in, but, you know, for whatever reason, I was just like, you know, I will just kind of experience what it is to be, you know, in a relationship with somebody. Like, I'll just give myself three months to kind of like experience being in a dating relationship with a Zach type person. I mean, like, I would have that choice. Like, you probably had that choice, too. Do you think? Well, I believe that Zach liked me sexually, but he did not like me emotionally or mentally. Um, Although I had a mental connection to him. I don't think he, I think he just wanted to fuck me. I don't think he wanted a relationship with me. And I do think there's a difference between fucking and making love. I don't think he would have ever made love to me. I think he would have fucked me and then probably ghosted me afterwards. Oh, I see. I see. So you couldn't have like a relationship with somebody in which you were kind of like making love with Zach. That's what I think you're saying. And so that's that's why well, I could never make love to someone like him. No, he was kind of like autistic fuckboy. If that if you can picture that in your mind, um, that should be like, so. you know, next fall on ABC, autistic fuckboy. <laughs> I would love yeah. to see a TV series about that. Like, I wonder if there's ever been a character like that so far. People can put it put it in the comments or something if they've ever seen autistic fuck boys portrayed yeah I'll try, just try to imagine it in my head in the meantime yeah I mean he was high functioning but um but to answer your question so I have a rule that I don't tell anyone that I talk to or that uh takes me out on a date um so I have never had a hookup because 
I want a relationship, but I don't um, like I'm not waiting until marriage, but I don't hook up with anyone like or, you know, have sex until like I give I used to be 60 and now it's 90. So like I need to be dating someone for like two to three months before I, you know, you know, bump chicka bump bump with them. And that has not happened. So yeah. I just haven't dated anyone. And usually like th- this one guy, he lasted, he almost lasted a month. And then he wanted to like, you know, make love for one month together. And I was like, nope. And then he got really angry and he ended our thingy, but he didn't claim me as a girlfriend. So it's like, oh. we're just dating and now you want to like bang me. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and also it was long distance. So it wasn't really like, like it was mostly an online relationship. Mm. So like, yeah, he met me once and then he met me again three weeks later and he was like, do you want to? And I was like, nope. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So what, what about like the female incel community then kind of like attracted you to be a part of it and maybe like what caused you to be like, no, because this is the first I've heard of female incel. Is, is it okay to ask okay. these questions? Yes, of course, of course. It's like no limitations. You can, any, any questions. Okay, so before I talk about the female incel, you know, community, I have, first have to define what an incel is and what a femme cell is. Yeah. Um, so an incel is a man that cannot get access to sex. Mm-hmm. A femme cell is a woman that cannot get access to a relationship. Mm. Um, so there is a difference. And in, in the femme cell community, which one of the reasons why I left is because transphobic because it's like you have to be like cisgendered biological female to be a part of the femme cell community Mm. I'm cisgendered by the way but like there's a lot of stuff wrong with that community that's what I'm saying Mm. but yeah so um female incels uh do not uh, identify as females that cannot get access to sex like Mm. we know that we're female we know that we can get access to sex I see a femme cell is a female that cannot get access to a relationship because men are the within you know the heterosexual relationship dynamic men are the gatekeepers of relationships like Ah, this is really interesting i'm glad i asked this question (laughs) yeah 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 like for example if a girl is you know dating some guy for a couple months a couple years she'll throw hints to him that she wants to get married because he's the one that has to you know, go down on one knee and say, will you marry me? So men are the gatekeepers of relationships and women are the gatekeepers of sex. Because if a woman, if a man is with a woman and she says, no, I don't want to have sex with you, then he's not going to have sex with her. Hopefully, yeah. you know, consent yeah. matters. But but really but quickly, yeah. but like, uh, so the man has to be like, the man doesn't have to be the one that goes down on one knee or whatever, but... Uh, like and especially I mean that would be like a heteronormative relationship right like yeah I'm talking and, about yeah, heteronormative yeah, yeah, yeah. relationship yeah but uh but you're saying like they the 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 man in a heteronormative relationship would have to say yes to the marriage you know and and there's something about them that tends to be like no just like there's something about women that tends to be no to sex like the 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 barrier <laughs> if you like made generalizations about gender for sex is women and for men relationship is it's men does that mm. sound right i apologize if i'm making generally no no no, no. you're just it. speaking to your own experience which is like heteronormative relationships yeah um yeah okay can you um say uh what you said again i am trying to understand it because i want to agree but i don't remember what you <laughs> yeah I'm sorry, so i, I think sleep. i think what you're kind of saying is that um you know, if if in a heteronormative relationship, uh, just kind of like how the incels say, like the women are the ones who can, who who basically say yes or no to sex, generally speaking, you know, uh, that in heteronormative relationships, it's the man who says yes or no to relationships, generally speaking, you know, so Correct. like, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, in that, you know, part of you know heteronormative relationships that's how the dynamics go most of the time I agree yeah. with that yeah mm-hmm. and then so the so uh that's what a femme cell is is somebody who has cannot get access to kind of relationships is that right yes a female that cannot get access to a relationship correct yeah and then uh so you identified with that community for a while but then you left them 
yes, because that community is full of autistic women and women that are not conventionally attractive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, well, not just autistic women, they are women that have Down syndrome, you know, like it's full of just women with like, I shouldn't say like issues, but just roadblocks, um, you know, that would make it harder to find a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, yeah, I, I kind of know what you mean. Uh, I think like I have like a this person that I know of, and uh, you know, in like online dating, she really kind of downplays like let's say some of the things that are more core to her day to day life, some of the struggles that she encounters, even like with mobility and stuff. And I, I think that it's because she uh, that 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 is a roadblock, let's say, for her to uh, having a relationship, especially with people. I mean, I actually now I'm thinking of another person. This could be about multiple people <laughs> where this is kind of true. And uh, yeah, it's it's like it's difficult because I think that these people could easily be like in a relationship with somebody and have like rewarding relationships with people if people could kind of get over the initial whatever it is. And I think that's, that's interesting to kind of think that um, uh, I keep, keep asking intuition about things that I should or should not share about this because it is kind of delicate topic, but the, yeah, yeah, uh, I think too, I don't know if this is kind of a generalization I'm making, but I have heard this about kind of gender relationships is that men would like to be with a partner that other people find attractive if they are yes. yeah heterosexual or if they're they're homosexual they would like to be like if their partner is admired by other people and found to be sexually desirable a desirable partner then men feel like that's a good thing and that women i've heard tend to like when their partner shows signs of nesting like gaining weight God, yeah <laughs> yeah or or for like if they're dating another woman you know like gaining weight or whatever and to women that feels better like here's here's the kind of the theory that i've heard because that suggests that they are less likely to leave the relationship you know that they're really nesting that they're kind of committed to the relationship you can tell because they're not on the prowl obviously they're not on the prowl they've let themselves go and and I think that that's uh, that's kind of interesting, but I could kind of see, especially if you're fem cell and especially if you're heterosexual, you're looking for a heterosexual relationship that, you know, like that would might be a, the hurdle. In fact, that might be why they are fem cells is because men, even though they might find somebody like that, like a perfectly appropriate partner, you know, somebody who considers themselves a fem cell, they might kind of have a hard time with the way that they're viewed amongst fellow men like why would yes, you yeah why would you date or true. marry this person mm-hmm. yeah from my experience um unfortunately uh there is some truth to that and a person a couple of weeks ago was like why don't the incels and the fem cells just get with each other and that is because <laughs> the incels are not attracted to the fem cells mm. um there's some men in the incel community that say I would never date a black girl. I would never date an overweight woman. I would never date a girl with mental health issues, Mm. despite them having mental health issues, being (laughs) overweight, or even some insults, you know, of color saying this, you know, so they- Very interesting. I'm I'm like super interested in this. Like I've never really thought, hey, you know, I'd love to spend, you know, several minutes discussing this and now here I am. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, But I had to leave the community because I- I was kind of forced out, if I'm going to be honest, uh, because a couple uh, what, months ago. What, what sort of like regulatory whatever does this community have? Is it like Reddit or something? How can you be forced out? Well, the fem cells, we were on Reddit and then we were kicked off of Reddit and we started our, well, I shouldn't say we, they started our, their own Discord. Mm-hmm. So it's a very underground community, very online underground community. When you, um, What are you saying? Undergone? underground oh, sorry underground. i'm see. wearing my headphones do you want me to take them off no I, either way whatever's good for you okay good. um can you hear me yeah i have you know it, it's probably not you i have like speech issues sometimes i like i watch movies with subtitles on and stuff you know like, I'll, tr- I, I'll turn off the headphones if that's the case so that i'd like um you to be able to hear me and whoever's watching to be able to hear me yeah you want me well, to turn them try off without the headphones yeah sure okay wait hold on 
so sorry. Why isn't it? Okay, it's off. Okay. Oh, no. what happened? No, you're back. Okay. Everything's good. <laughs> okay. All right. So you can hear me now. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So, um, so yeah, um, I was kicked out of the femcell community because uh, I started going to the gym and that was right around the time, like a couple months ago when I started doing interviews about, um, my ASPD diagnosis because I was living in Florida with that gay guy that I, um, I think I told you a little yeah. bit about. And um, he was like, you should just, you know, be open about it because it's not something that you should be ashamed about. And also maybe you can help destigmatize this disorder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I did my first interview with Mark from Soft White Underbelly and I told one of my friends in the fem cell community about it and she got upset. And I told her, no, I'm not going to talk is about it, you guys. I'm is literally it because it's Soft White Underbelly that she got upset or why did she get upset? Um, she got upset that I was even talking about the community at all. Oh, and you, you mostly talked about fem cell with Mark or you mostly talked about no. psychopathy or both? Um, well, I would not say that I am a psychopath. I would say that I have traits of sociopathy. Yeah. Um, I think there is a difference, but I talked about, about Mark. I mean, sorry, I talked to Mark about the autism and the ASPD diagnosis. And then I told him about a comment that I had gotten about being a fem cell. A guy called me a fem cell on um, TikTok or whatever. But um, yeah, that was like like the beginning of them saying, OK, we don't think we want you to be part of our community. And then when I started going to the gym, um, they were like, oh, well, you're just going to go to the gym. And it was so crazy because it's like <laughs> I'm there. Yeah, yeah. What what is the gym? Is it like church? You know, amongst atheists, like oh, so you're just gonna go to the to church or whatever? So suddenly you believe in God or whatever? Like, well, a large portion of the female insult community is uh, overweight. Mm. Um, so when someone is trying to lose weight for their health, which I was doing because I'm borderline diabetic, mm -hmm. um, they see that as like, oh, you think you're the shit now you're going to the gym because they think I'm going to the gym to lose weight, to be, you know, to get a man or whatever. And I mean, we all bitch about how we can't find men. So like, even if I was losing weight to find a man, it's like, how is that bad? Or if I'm losing weight to, you know, uh, be healthier how is that bad but I think um one of the girls um she just took offense to it because she is over 300 pounds and this girl is a beautiful girl actually like she has a really pretty face she has like blonde hair blue eyes like very pretty girl she's just a, a big girl mm -hmm. and um she got angry at me and she's like you're no longer allowed to be a part of our discord um like whoever you know is emailing with you like stop emailing Cassie so it, it kind of sucked but in a way it was like okay I'm free I can go to the gym without being bitched at hmm, interesting okay yeah I, this story is like I feel like I'm getting such an insight into like you know like the the width breadth depth of humanity is is bigger than you've ever like imagined that's what I always every day it seems like I learn something new yeah, she said that it was fat phobic and racist for me to go to the gym. This is a white woman telling me that I'm being racist for going to the gym. What is so the racism like, of going to the gym? Is it because gyms are not in an inclusive place? Well, actually, from my experience, gyms are actually in a very inclusive place. Um, but um, she said that I was trying to fit a Eurocentric image of beauty. And I thought I would never fit that image of beauty. And I'm like, I know. Like if anything, she said you that, that you were never going to fit it. Me. That seems bum bum. It seems like toilet to tell people that what's going to what's true about them. I, I don't let people tell me about myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's good. That's good. It, I wasn't trying to fit in a Eurocentric image of beauty. I was just I'm just trying to be healthy and, you know, not have my belly hang over my coochie. But even if, you know, your belly hangs over your coochie, that's fine if you're comfortable with that. But like she, I don't think she's comfortable with herself and she is, um, oh. you know, projecting that onto me. I so, see. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Coochie you know, is Vijay Day, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one I knew. <laughs> so, But I, I have heard too that there is like a thing with uh, people who are of a certain kind of, let's say, size or shape and or shape that like they they can't have uh, sexual intercourse 
and I've heard it described secondhand by somebody who who experiences this because there's like a buffer zone, you know, like mm -hmm. there's like penetration. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or oh. whatever else is going on. I don't know. Yeah, I I mean, I've never seen a full body picture of her. I've just seen her like from here up. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, if anything, she fits the Eurocentric image of beauty more than me. But from because I am, you know, trying to lose weight, she's saying, oh, that's racist. But like, I tried to explain to her how hypocritical it is to, you know, as a white woman. And, and by the way, I love white women, love white men, love Asian people, love Spanish people. I'm not saying that anyone of any race shouldn't you know, have criticisms of anything else. Sure. But um, yeah, like, I just thought it was very hypocritical and fucked up of her to say that I'm trying to, you know, fit a certain beauty standard, because she fits that more than I do. If she lost 200 or, you know, or so pounds, she would literally be the Eurocentric image of beauty. Yeah. So yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you got kicked out of the community. Yeah. But you feel free. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely feel free. I mean, unfortunately, I think technically I still am a fem cell because I'm still single and, you know, uh, and it's not by choice. So, like, yeah, like, technically I am still a fem cell, but, like, I feel free because I can now talk about my fitness journey without being ridiculed. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Wow, we've talked about so many things. Yeah. Are there things like that we that are big topics that we should get to now that definitely. we're like about like, I don't know, 45 minutes in or something? Yeah, definitely. So one thing um, I admire about you and a few other um, women with ASPD that I've spoken to is that you guys are in relationships. So what is the secret to that? Because <laughs> I have been single all my life and being single is actually contributing to like, I guess, my sociopathic thoughts, because now when I see couples together, I get angry and I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess for me, you know, like I had relationships and they were like, I, I think similar to what you kind of described, they were like, uh, you know, mostly kind of for me mental. And I think that must've been weird for my partners because I think, you know, like when we did engage in like whatever physical affection or something, it was more like, I mean, I felt like a little bit like a sex doll or something, even if it was just like we're sitting on the couch or whatever, like kind of like, OK, I know this is important to you. And so I'm going to engage in this. I think that that probably weirded people out. But I was that really... with women or men? Both. But you felt like yeah. a sex doll. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. By the way, when I said that I hate being couples, I didn't mean that like I hate couples. I meant that like I that I get angry at seeing something that I don't have but I oh, love yeah. seeing couples okay good yeah I mean you have the emotions yeah. you have or whatever and when I say a sex doll I kind of mean that I don't mean that I like anything I was objectifying myself you know I was like oh you know uh have you heard of, of the term co-modification no can you explain it to me yeah co-modification is like when you take something that normally doesn't have kind of a monetary value and you give it that monetary value. So like I was co-modifying myself in a way because I, I, I used my own kind of body, I guess, and my own, I don't know, like other aspects of my body and self too, uh, as kind of like a, a little bit of a currency, like, oh, I'm willing to trade you access to you know the body and like these, these experiences or whatever with me in exchange for whatever it is I'm, I feel like I'm getting from you, you know, like whatever it was you know and um for for various people it was it was different things or something but i didn't feel like i was having like a very integrated experience i guess is what i'm kind of trying to say like things just kind of seemed really like uh you know like this you know okay now we're now we're like touching each other here we go time to touch each other or something it wasn't like <laughs> like it wasn't like self expression to me you know it was yeah. just kind of like playing a role and uh, so I had relationships before, but I don't think I really had kind of what I would describe as like an emotional kind of psychological romantic intimacy, uh, probably until like, my current girlfriend. But I think that the thing that was keeping me from it was that I didn't have a very good and uh, people who've who've heard me speak before 
probably no surprise I'm about to say this. I'm almost like hesitating to say it, but like sense of self, you know, I didn't have like a very good understanding of who I was. So in a relationship, I didn't really feel like I was showing up as myself in the relationship either, maybe is a good way to put it. And do you so, think you dissociated? Sorry. I don't even know what dissociated means. Can you help me with that one? Um, Like, were you there, like during, you know, the times that you felt, well, that you were, you know, being intimate with your partners in the past? Um, Did you feel like you were there, but you weren't really there? I felt like it was like I was there and I, I was there and I was like an active participant and I was having like the experience. I guess it just felt like I was watching like a movie on mute or something is what it felt like. It wasn't like I was. So I would say probably no, I didn't dis dissociate. Is that the word? I think yeah. so. Yeah. So I don't think I'm running on three hours of sleep. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. And uh, yeah, I just kind of was like, do you know that song? Is that all there is? Is that all there is? Is that all there is? <laughs> it's like an older like song from like the 50s or whatever. If that's all there is, then why not keep dancing? That's kind of felt, you know, it felt like a little bit flat. It's like, you know, when people come out to the West Coast of the United States and try in and out, sometimes sometimes they're like, is that all there is? You know, like that you've heard about <laughs> like these or you've heard about like these, oh, you have to try this or something. And then you try it and then you're like, OK. In fact, I had a friend who was like, you know, I feel really badly for you, me, uh, because for her, sex was so important and it still remains like a very important part of her life and kind of self-expression. And she was like, okay, because you're like Mormon uh, kind of upbringing and stuff, you've had kind of like these different, in some ways, limited sexual experiences. Uh, and so that's why she was like feeling badly for me. And then, you know, the first time that like I had like, well, like we'll keep it a little bit more vague. <laughs> but I was just kind of like, I don't get it. You know, like why did she feel so badly for me? You know, like there doesn't seem to be kind of like a lot going on. And um uh, and for me, that that was kind of a deal breaker with relationships, I guess is what I'm saying. So I could be in a relationship, but it was kind of the same thing as like having a job. You know, it was like, OK, I'm willing to have this job because I get these benefits and, you know, I show up in these particular ways and that I'm totally consenting to this. It's totally consensual. I don't feel put upon or whatever. Or if I did feel put upon, I would just like leave. It's just like you would quit the job or something if it no longer worked for you. But I didn't feel like. It was like, um, you know, I didn't feel like it was part of my purpose or part of my identity or part of my soul. You know, like I never felt like soul connected to somebody, I guess, until I met my girlfriend. And actually the first time that we we made out, I was like, oh, we are soul bonded. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> And then I thought, what does this mean then, you know, that we're soul bonded? And I guess that has been like really easy and like a, 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 a big gift, I guess, that I've experienced in my life is because uh, that that truth of being soul bonded has whatever that means, you know, has been really uh, has helped me to, I think, be motivated to try to understand how to keep showing up in relationships you know, like not just part of me, like I was doing before, but like all of me and, and really kind of encourage her, her to do the same and trying to, you know, be the type of person that she could be all of herself with, you know, and try to kind of help the relationship grow in ways to like accommodate even more and more of herself and even more and more of myself you know, as we kind of uh, became like our lives became more enmeshed, you know, not trying to like have things kind of closed down a little bit or like, oh, there's only room for so much here, you know, but just trying to keep expanding, you know, so that there there could be like, so it's like a California king size bed or whatever, instead of like trying to cram everybody into like a twin or something. Yeah, you're so lucky that you found that. I think I it's... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really great that you found someone that, you know, is your soulmate. And soulmates. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, soul bonded. Yeah, it's soul still, bonded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still like something that's super awesome. And I hope to find one day. And um, I think it's great that you have that. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I don't, 
I didn't know that song that you were singing earlier, but I have a question for you. Um, do you, do you like music? Like, do you, do you enjoy music? Yeah, I do. I am a musician. Like I, uh, I studied oh, music okay. that, yeah, my undergrad degree is in music. Nice. Nice. I, um, so I don't really talk about this a lot, but like, I feel nothing when I listen to music. I pretend like I do, you know, obviously, because I don't want to have like a blank look on my face and a monotone voice, but I, I don't like music. I feel nothing when I listen to music. Um, lately I've been listening to like Christian metal at the gym oh, just because like that kind of like gets me a little pump, but I feel little to nothing when it comes to music. Um, I, I mask a lot like, um, because I want to, you know, fit in. I think, um, you said this early, I don't know if it was you or someone else, um, being a pro social sociopath, like mm. not wanting, like I do have the urge and it sucks that I have this urge. Um, and I do believe it is from, you know, uh, being abused as a child. Um, but I do have the urge to like hurt people, but I would never do that because I identify as a Christian and like, also I don't want to go to jail and I don't identify as a bad person. So like, I would never, you know, hurt people or whatever, mm -hmm. but like, oh my gosh, not being able to like feel anything when I listen to music or not being able to dance you know I, I can you know dance but like I feel nothing when I dance I feel nothing when I listen to music and I think that's so amazing that there are people on this spectrum that like you know are musicians like you and like love music and you know people that you know love to dance and then I'm just like I don't know what that feels like but I I, I think that's amazing that you know you guys are able to to feel so I don't know that I think of music in a feeling way. Um, then how do you think about it? Yeah. So do you do you like poetry? Do you read and understand poetry? Like you're like, oh, poetry, that's kind of nice or something. Um, when I was younger, I used to write poetry. And then I found out that my dad used to write poetry and I stopped writing poetry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, I yeah. have an appreciation for poetry. Yeah. So I don't, I, d I can't understand it. Like I, it's not like I'm like, Oh, this sucks or whatever. I read it and I try really hard. So th that's why I kind of identify with what you've said about music. And then my girlfriend also loves, you know, she's like psychopathic. She loves and, you know, here and there writes poetry or whatever. She wrote like one just recently, like something like, but it's April. So I'll try. That was the poem. I was like, I, that I understand, you know, like it's short or whatever. Maybe the shorter it is or whatever. But, and she says she doesn't even think about the meaning. She just kind of thinks about like the the flow of the words, the, the way it looks on the page. Or, you know, she tells me all these different things that kind of are like that she's taking in or whatever. I don't understand it. Like I've only understood, you know, like a handful of poems, like in a way that kind of makes sense to me. And I, I think of it kind of as just like, I don't know, like Chinese or something. Like there's like a few yeah. phrases that I can pick up on where I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. And then that's like like reading poetry or, or reading the lyrics to, you know, music. Like I can understand it and I could like like kind of get why someone would like it. But that that there's a disconnect kind of between like my mind because I I know like what song, you know, would be better, you know, if someone was playing it than another song if someone was playing it yeah but like like uh there's a disconnect between my mind and like I guess like my my heart or my body or whatever because like yeah like like I would rather someone play classical music than play like rap um just because like I guess like yeah it, it's less like boom 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 like it's it's less stress on on like in my mind but <laughs> I like quiet more, but like I, I do have an appreciation for certain types of music or certain types of dances, but I can't I can't really like connect to it. And I, I think that's like the part where, you know, I guess the sociopathy comes in is just like not being able to connect. And like, even though, like I said, like I value life, I identify as a Christian, I would never do anything that would put me in jail or I just don't identify as a bad person but like people that are on the extreme end of you know the I guess sociopathic or psychopathic spectrum that do go out and like commit heinous acts like killing people mm -hmm. um like 
there's part of me and this is this makes me feel disgusted but there is part of me that can understand like why they would do that because like living you know your your whole entire life not feeling connected to anyone or like the things that you know people do because you know I am living on a planet with like other people and people listen to music and people dance and people you know are in relationships and never feeling like like a like a human you know emotional like like empathetic connection to that and just appreciating it and like like finding the value in it it is dehumanizing in a way even if it's mm. even if no one is dehumanizing me it's like right. dehumanizing to oneself to like not be able to connect to like life mm. so the people that go out and like you know see a happy couple and like you know, murder them or, you know, see children pr- playing and murder them or like, you know, or, you know, shoot up uh, like, a, I don't know, like a concert or maybe like a dance place or whatever. I think like, oh my God, that is horrible, you know, but I also think like, this is someone that has gone their entire life not feeling connected to human beings. Hmm. And now they have developed such an anger, you know, their anger has developed into hate and they feel like oh well if I can't you know connect to this then I want to end it you know and that's like I don't know like I don't know if I'm explaining this right no that's really interesting that's the first this is not how I feel Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I can intellectually understand you know people on the extreme side of the spectrum when they do do things like that because um I currently live in a uh low-income um high crime area like I live in the hood Mm -hmm. um this is probably like the ratchetest place I've ever lived in um and like people that you know do certain things like I never understood it and now I'm like oh my god yeah like my neighbor um downstairs she literally plays music at all hours of the night and I'm unable to sleep and I'm like wow like I thank god that I have high impulse control and that obviously I would never do anything to like go to jail or go to hell because if I was like, you know, on the extreme end of the spectrum, God only knows what I would do, you know? So Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like it's, it sucks. Cause like, obviously I don't want to be able to empathize with killers, but when you feel, you know, ostracized from like everyone on the planet, like it's hard to feel human. I mean, I'm not going to say I don't feel human because as a black uh, person, some people will just like go with that. <laughs> but um, I just I don't know. I don't I don't feel. I just I don't know. It, it just sucks. I don't I don't really feel connected, I would say. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, that kind of explains to me like I've never really understood uh, some of these kind of mass killings for whatever reason. And that actually helps me to understand, like, why do they target the places that they target, maybe even, is is because they feel like that that seems to make sense. They feel kind of like almost uh, disregarded, maybe, like their own humanity is somehow disregarded by everybody, like, moving on without them, I guess. You know, we're doing yeah. our own thing, but and something that you can't be a part of, kind of, you know? Yeah, yeah. And to backtrack on what you said earlier, not having a self- sense of self. Um, I grew up with a mother that is very narcissistic and she would leave. Oh, what? Um, A sociopath who has a narcissistic parent? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It it is what it is. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm like, so I think the kids call like humble or whatever, because um, yeah, like, like she put me in situations where like I got you know sexually assaulted in you know and just like not developing a core sense of self because I had to make sure that like she was all right and that I wasn't doing anything to piss her off especially because my dad wasn't in the picture um I basically was you know trying to keep her together and she wasn't able to like emotionally support me because she was just like falling apart most of the time um so I had to like turn off my emotions um and I I think like I consciously did that as a child like when I realized that like I was crying and there was no one to comfort me I like had to turn off my emotions or else like I I would have broke like my mind would have broke you know so I think that was a coping mechanism yeah um especially growing up on the spectrum and growing up 
undiagnosed for so long. Um, when I was homeless and I went into the shelter, um, the shelter, I mean, sorry, the psychiatrist in the shelter, um, he said, well, how long have you had autism? And mm. I was like, what? I don't think I have autism. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, like shortly after that, um, I was tested and then diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Yeah. So I went undiagnosed until I was in like my mid 20s. But that is kind of a funny question to ask, like, how long do you have autism? That's almost like, how long have you been heterosexual? You'd be like, yeah, but like, I guess as, <laughs> as a psychiatrist, it was just like obvious to him. Okay. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, like, I would say I'm hetero flexible. Okay. Um, Because I was in an LGBT shelter. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I went, I was in Marsha's house, um, which is like an LGBT shelter in the Bronx. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh do you do you have anything to say I feel like I'm talking too much I apologize well yeah you know I want to kind of like go back to no you're not talking too much at all I want to kind of go back to like this idea of music though what I kind of think I do think that there's probably something mirror neurons or whatever with dancing and with music and that there is like this kind of uh, dancing uh, music connection you know, like in our brains I think that that's that's like a thing I think we perceive music as movement like, I think, you know, it's it's been a while since I've, like, studied kind of, like, the, the whatever, like, ways that our brain perceives music. And I never really studied it that much. It was, it was like, one or two weeks in, like, whatever course <laughs> there was in university <laughs> that somebody uh-huh. kind of mentioned it. But, I mean, all it is is, like, sound waves that, like, vibrate our, the little bones in our ears that then get, like, you know, those those um signals or whatever the sense of vibration gets like translated to our brain in these particular ways but i i don't feel music either and i actually do get that question a lot like and kind of assumption like oh you know how can you because i think most people feel music i don't think most people kind of cognitively understand it it actually reminds me a little bit of like the distinction between cognitive versus active empathy. Yeah. 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 I have a cognitive empathy. Like I, I choose not to be an asshole. And a lot of people think that because, and I think this is probably one of the reasons why I'm single, si- single. Cause one guy, he was like, Oh, if you have ASPD, then like, how do I know you're not going to stab me? And I was like, because I don't go around stabbing people. Like what? <laughs> like I'm not, I I haven't done it once, you know, never once stabbed anybody. Me, no. Some other psychopaths, maybe, but not this one. Some other bad things, sure. It's not like I'm I'm like an angel or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. When I was a teenager, that was like when I was in the depths of my psychopathy and being homeless kind of like humbled me. I I guess it like taught me how to be like more empathetic. Hmm. That's when I got closer to God as far as like my religion and how it's helped me a lot yeah yeah but um but yeah I I think yeah sorry oh yeah yeah so I was just gonna like wrap it up so the way that I like learned music though was just kind of hear the notes or whatever and I learned it kind of like in the same way that somebody might learn like I don't know how to speak French or something you know Mm -hmm. but also French if like French was like your first language but you didn't learn it until you were like eight or something I guess so I think of it as I think of like skiing or swimming things that I took lessons for and yeah they feel good to do you know but it's not like I feel like they're I don't associate them with like hey this is conveying an emotion when I ski or conveying an emotion when I swim (laughs) or something where it's, yeah. it's just like something that I engage in. It is one of my favorite ways to engage with other people on because I feel mm-hmm. like the like we're speaking kind of like this common language that often like I'm speaking their language, you know, and speaking it kind of as a second language to me. But like when we do the music for whatever reason, like I, I feel like I understand them more directly. Like I can hear their brain, you know, like I can hear I can hear the way that they are, you know, better uh better than I can when I'm like talking to somebody like in English yeah yeah no that's that's beautiful like that's beautiful that you interpret you know music and being a musician in your own way and not in like the same way as others because like everyone's an individual and I think um it's beautiful that you know you can be yourself and that other people can you know be themselves when it comes to their passions yeah, but I would also bet though, and I'm I'm like willing to like 
uh, what, whatever. I bet if you, if you took like some music lessons, you know, or, or just started to learn how to play the piano that you, it would be something that you could learn just like you can learn how to perspective take. Yeah. Um, so this is another thing people think I'm lying about. Um, I don't know how to play play the piano. I don't know how to play instruments, but like I can hear something and I could try to do it and it'll sound like, oh, okay, you kind of know how to do this. And I'm just like, no, I don't. But really I think that's just like an autistic thing. Like uh -huh. a few of, you know, autistic people, we could just like kind of like pick up on things a little easier. Maybe some of us, but um, yeah, I don't know. I tried. I tried learning piano and trying to like, you know, like listening to Beethoven and like Mozart and stuff. And it's like, oh, I feel nothing. But I would rather listen to Beethoven than like WAP or something like that. So yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it's just um I I don't know, like it 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 is a little, you know, what like what it what is it like being me? Um to answer your question earlier um it it's not easy because I constantly just have to like they say like oh people you know that are sociopaths don't really you know care about other people or empathize with other people but I'm constantly trying to you know be empathetic and trying to appear normal and have a mask of you know you know normalcy and like sanity because um like if I did if I were to unmask mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if you had said this earlier, I don't know, but like, um, if I did try to unmask, that would put me in a very unsafe situation, you know, especially as a female, because then I'd be making people feel uncomfortable. And when people are uncomfortable, um, they, there's a chance they might hurt you, you know, because people don't like unpredictability. They like predictable people because predictable people are seen as safe, um, and it's just it's not safe for me to be myself so I have to just pretend I um I like that you laugh so much uh because I I don't know like I'm not a laugher I will laugh but like again like I just feel nothing when I laugh so yeah it's just like just pretending you know to make other people feel comfortable there's a lot of people pleasing with my ASPD which is which contradicts the disorder um, which is why I said it's like a spectrum, you know? I don't know that it contradicts it. Like, I think that I think you're, and this is kind of a controversial thing I've, I've found as I've spoken more about it. I think that sociopathic people, people with antisocial personality disorder, anywhere on the spectrum tend to mask, you know, like they tend to manipulate, they tend to kind of be a chameleon. Uh, and I think it's it's for all sorts of reasons, but I'm sure for one, it's because they don't want to have bad things happen to them. It's interesting that you say that survival. Yeah, as I a female survival. Yeah. yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. You know, my girlfriend and I tell kind of this joke about people like abusing their kids, where we say like, uh, like leave your kid alone, leave them alive. You know. Okay. <laughs> What does that mean exactly? Kind of like why are why are parents getting so angry that they end up like killing their kids basically? You know, leave your kid alone, leave it alive. So kind of to us it's mm -hmm. like if you're getting so angry that you're hitting your kid, like what's ki keeping you from killing them? I think that's our fear is that we don't understand that dynamic. We don't understand like if you could hit your kid to us, it seems like you could kill your kid easily, right? So yeah. say leave them alone, leave them alive. Yeah, that's one thing that um I was constantly in fear of as a child because I was getting beaten almost every single day and raped, like, not almost every single day, but I raped a lot, um, beaten by my mom, not, you know, assaulted by my mom um, in that way. But, um, but yeah, and I think like a part of my brain that like, because I'm diagnosed ASPD, and then I've had an MRI done, and they said that there was a lot of gray in my amygdala area. So it's like people are like, oh, like she doesn't, she's too nice or she seems, you know, like she wouldn't have this disorder. And I'm like, oh, actually, no, like my brain is, I literally have brain damage from um, the abuse that I, you know, suffered as a child. And my, technically I have the brain of a, of a sociopath, but like, that doesn't mean that because I was hurt that I'm going to go out and like physically hurt other people mm -hmm. um, because 
I don't think that I don't think that I have the right to do that. And there are some people that, you know, were raped as children, especially, you know, some men that were raped by pedophiles. And then they go out and they themselves become a pedophile. They go and they rape kids and they think, well, it happened to to me and I don't deserve it. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to, you know, do it to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think like, wow, like, yeah, that is disgusting. Um, But um, I can totally understand why, like, you know, when, you know, the bitch downstairs plays her really loud music, like I have intrusive thoughts of just like, because like (laughs) when so much violent, you know, things happen to you as a kid and like, um, as far as essay goes, like, it wasn't just like penis and vagina, you know, like uh, sexual assault. It was like, um, like really demented, um, just really dehumanizing things that were done to me. And like the fact that I have never, you know, physically, sexually, whatever, like hurt anyone like is. And I know that I shouldn't be like, oh, like, like this is amazing. But like, it really is because I feel like a lot of people that go through like what I went through and the reason why I know this is because I spoke and I spoke to some of them. They are incarcerated. Like they go out and they do it to other people and they feel justified doing so because they're like, well, it happened to me. It happened to me. And I'm like, no, just because it happened to you doesn't mean that you have the right to go out and do it to other people because then you're just creating more hurt people that go out and hurt other people, yeah. you know? And um, it is hard because like uh, living in an environment that's not conducive to my mental health, as far as like, you know, being broke and having to live in the hood, it doesn't help with my ASPD at all. I used to live in like uh, Sayville, which is like predominantly white neighborhood. It's like really quiet. And I couldn't afford to live in Sayville anymore. And now I'm living like in in the hood. And um, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I definitely understand why there's a large percentage of uh, people of color that are incarcerated, because I don't think people should live on top of each other like this. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's conducive to mental health or emotional health to be in an inner city, you know? Um, So I'm trying to like uh, make YouTube videos and like do more interviews and do more mental health advocacy so that I can like, you know, make some money so that I can like get out of the hood because one of my fears is like ending up in jail. Like it's actually like, like I have a fear that I, not that I will kill someone, but that I will have to defend myself and by defending myself accidentally, you know, harm someone in that way and it is scary it is scary like I'm I rather live in the woods by myself and when I say that to people they're like oh like why would you want to live in the woods you never know what could happen in the woods and I'm like no I know what can happen because I I know what I could expect from an animal I don't know what to expect from other people like I don't feel comfortable being around all these people because I try to be nice especially with autism you know having a developmental dis- disability um and yes i'm high functioning but i still consider it a disability because there are people that make fun of me when i go outside and i think why is this person laughing at me and um yeah like that has you know affected my aspd too because when you go outside and people are laughing at you or people are you know talking shit about you and you don't know why um my automatic thought in the past has been like god like you know, intrusive thought, intrusive thought, intrusive thought. But lately I've been just like praying and going to therapy and yeah, doing YouTube videos and trying to help other people so that they don't end up incarcerated. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm talking a lot. I apologize. No, No, it's really good. But I feel like, you know, this is kind of like, I, I recently did this podcast with some Australian dude named Julian. That's probably enough information for people to look it up if they're interested and he he asked me, you know, like, what would you kind of say to like normal people or whatever? And it's kind of like, just why do you care so much what other people are doing? Like, why are people making fun of you on the street? You know, why do they, why why is what they're doing bother them? You know, like, what is the... Because, is that? <laughs> because if people don't like you, then there's a chance they can physically harm you. And I'm a short woman. I'm like five foot two, five foot three. And I had to, you know act in a way so that everyone could like me because I have spent most of my you know life being physically harmed and I refuse to let that happen again so when people laugh at me outside 
I know this is like a huge jump. Um, it's a huge assumption, but I assume that they are going to kill me. Like the person that's laughing at me, um, I'm like, oh my God, they're going to kill me. <laughs> and I know that that's like, that, and I acknowledge that that's like crazy, but um, it is, it is crazy to, you know, have to be in fight or flight or in survival mode. But I think with this disorder and with autism, I'm constantly just in survival mode. So like, I don't care what they say about me. I care what they are capable of doing to me. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I totally agree with you about that because I feel the same, you know, way. Like, why do I mask? A lot of it is, uh, yeah, because I'm I'm a small woman who can be like oppressed. And like, have I been oppressed before? You know, like any probably woman who has ever said no to any, I mean, man for sure, but then like a lot of other women too, you know, like people can get so aggressive so quickly. Like if things kind of don't go what, you know, what, how they expect it, that it's going to go, I guess is a good way to put it. You know, there's something that people, it's like they feel tricked to buy stuff. If you yeah. like defy their expectations and they, mm-hmm. they hate feeling tricked, it's like, yeah. it's like to them feeling tricked is you might as well kill someone if you feel tricked. <laughs> Yes, yes. And a lot of men do not realize that socially awkward women exist. And they also assume that like women of color, like black and Latina, whatever, women are just like social butterflies and sassy. And I am extremely socially awkward. I am an introvert. I am a nerd. And guys, you know, that I meet on Bumble or Christian Mingle, um, when they meet me for coffee at Dunkin' Donuts or at Starbucks, they have an assumption in their mind that I'm going to be a certain way. And then they meet me and they don't you know, know what box to put me in because I'm just, I'm weird. Like I'm a weirdo. And then they feel uncomfortable. One guy, he was like, oh, I'm getting weird vibes from you. Like, do you have a dick? And I was like, no, I don't have a dick. And even if I did, like, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't have a dick. And like, I just want to drink coffee and get to know you. And it was like, oh, okay. Um, Do you want to go play video games at my house later? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to play video games at your house later. Cause we were just meeting for a cup of coffee and I don't know you. And I don't know what you could do to me at your house. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> like, and then he goes to me after that, obviously. But like, yeah, it's like, maybe there are females that like uh, women that, all for stuff like that like oh let's go play video games like oh come over let's watch a movie but like unless I know someone like very well Uh I thought I knew Zach well and I knew him for a while and like I trusted him that he wouldn't um you know get me drunk because now you know that I can look at back on retro at retrospect he drank like probably one or two glasses and he kept on pouring and pouring and pouring me glasses and he was just taking like little sips and then when I when he saw that I was like you know loosey-goosey he decided to like make moves on me and this was someone that I considered a friend so if a friend could do that to me then like who are you I met you on Christian Mingle I met you on Bumble I'm not gonna go to your house Mm -hmm. you know so it is it is hard and then if I'm open about well, I am, you know, open about my disorder. A lot of guys, they're like, oh, okay, so you're going to try to, you know, what, kill me? You're going to try this? You're... And I'm just like, no, I am just looking for someone so that I don't die alone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to die alone. Yeah. One of my favorite fl- uh, favorite phrases for when people are like, oh, you want to kill me? And it's like, don't flatter yourself. Like, how are you so important to me that I want to kill you? <laughs> Like what? <laughs> Can I start using that? That's yeah, a good... yeah. Don't flatter yeah. yourself. Like wow. <laughs> That's a great response. Don't flatter yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think like the only. I think the main reason why I have this disorder is because when the psychiatrist was like, "Well, do you think about you know unaliving people?" I was like, "Yeah, the people that raped me when I was a child." Yes, and she was like, "Okay," and like. I think that would be like a normal thing to say, but apparently it's not. And like obvious, well, one of them is in jail and the other ones are not because it, you know, um, statue of limitations. And then like, you know, it's like, oh, well, where's the evidence and this and that, like one person, there was like proof of everything. And then everybody else was like, oh, we, we just, you know, but I've been trying to get them on the sex offender. What's it? Sex offender registry. 
registry. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and I've been super open about, you know, all my trauma. And that's the thing about people like like a holes online. They're like, oh, okay, well, you show this person this. Can I see your psyche val? Can I see your MRI? Can I see your court case? And I'm like, who are you? You have a picture of Naruto as your avatar. Like, I'm not gonna send you my documents. <laughs> like, like that makes me so angry, you know, because I'm like, you're nobody. Like, like I show it to the people that need to see it. And like the internet is just full of people that have balls, like for no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do the whole YouTube thing. And my channel is uh, Chocolate Autizzy because everybody likes chocolate. Um, like what I mean, chocolate, like the candy, you know, so like I identify as chocolate because chocolate is something that most everyone likes and <laughs> autizzy because I'm autistic. So chocolate autizzy. Nice. We'll put, we'll yeah. drop a link to it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then, um, you were going to say something. I apologize if I cut you off. I tend to like ramble a lot. I don't know what I was going to say. Was it about a specific thing? Just, I think, you know, like people kind of are like, oh, I think it, that it's uh, so terrible how like sociopaths are like lying to people all the time and pretending to not be sociopaths. And I'm like, uh, you guys are like so violent and unpredictable. <laughs> that you're, yes. you're beating your own children. Like, I do not trust you guys to, I mean, like when, when I was open my own self, you know, I got like fired. They were like, okay, you're banned from downtown San Francisco. I'm like, this is illegal. They're like, we don't care. We're going to call the cops or whatever. It's just kind of like, um, yeah, I don't know. They have, um, they have kind of, uh, I think you've, you've said it like in, in some good ways that I haven't really heard said exactly that way before they have expectations about, things just about life and reality and then if you yeah. defy those expectations it like sh- it uh, destabilizes I think their sense of reality and I think that's kind of what causes them to lash out is that suddenly they feel stupid and it's, yeah. it's like shocking what what can happen when people feel stupid when but I'll, I'll give you kind of an example I mean like this is the sort of stuff that I would like unknowingly just kind of walk into is one time I was visiting another sociopath in prison and it was my first time visiting a prison I think uh yeah first, first that I can kind of remember and so I was like you know whatever I'm just trying to like learn how to do things you know and first for sure the first time I visited prison in that particular location and I uh they have like the vending machines and stuff and people kind of during the visiting hours are constantly like getting snacks or whatever for people. And then you're often using the microwave because there's like hot wings or something that are like in the vending machine, some things that require the microwave. So there's like 10 microwaves lined up just along the wall of this visiting room. And I like go to open a microwave and I see that there's stuff in there. And so I just put the thing on top. And that like led to me almost like dying in this oh my gosh. waiting room. Yeah, because the person whose stuff I put on top was so pissed at me. Uh, it was like another woman who was there visiting somebody that like the guards had to get involved and kind of be like, you know, like if you don't sit back down or whatever to her, I guess, but also to me because they couldn't tell who who did what or whatever. You know, like, we're going to kick you out or we're going to blah, 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 blah. You know, but she was like, she was like threatening to kill me. She's like, you know, bitch. You Did she know about your disorder? No. But oh, that's okay. the sort of thing like where, you know, like where I could kind of, I have accidentally, you know, kind of like disrupted people's expectations for how things should go. You know, like she, yes. I guess, expected me not to put her thing up on the microwave top. You know, that was not her expectation. So she took that as a disrespect. And I didn't need yeah. disrespect. I was just kind of like, I am clueless. Like, is there a rule about don't put people's stuff up on the microwave or something that like these these rules I don't know about that I violate or something. And so the yeah. rules that I do know about, I'm like very careful to like follow them. Like, oh, okay, exactly. you know, look you in the eye, smile, ha 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 ha, you know, laugh at your yeah. jokes or whatever. Yeah, neurotypical people in my experience are more sociopathic than actual sociopaths um like for example behaviorally is that what you mean behaviorally. Like, yeah like they're more yes, antisocial. Yes. they can be like anti- yeah 
yeah, because the people that have opened up to me about their ASP diagnosis, that ha- the people that have emailed me, um, I'm like, what do you do for a living? Uh, one lady is a lawyer that works for Morgan and Morgan. Obviously, I can't say her name. Another person is a doctor that works at Downstate Hospital. And I was like, well, like, how does ASPD affect you? you know, at at your job. And he was like, well, I just like cutting flesh. And that's my thing. And so I became a doctor. And like his patients don't know that he has ASPD, but he's not out harming people. And that's why I'm saying like, there are people with ASPD that might have, you know, sociopathic tendencies or whatever, but like, don't actually harm people. There's another lady and um, gosh, I wish I could. (sighs) Okay, maybe I'll like, send you screenshots so that you know you know that um you know being truthful but i cannot you know say names obviously she no, is I married to you. a politician I, why would you lie <laughs> yes this woman is married to a politician and he has aspd mm-hmm. and he's per- a person that is working you know in politics there's a man working in law enforcement that emailed me after he saw my soft white underbelly interview and he said yeah i have aspd and like this is how it affects me and blah blah blah. obviously i'm not going to say his shit because i you know he works in law enforcement but yeah there are people that work in stem with this disorder so like I think a lot of people, when they think about sociopaths, they think about low functioning sociopaths that are currently in, you know, incarcerated. But the thing is, um, sociopathy is a spectrum. There are low functioning sociopaths that unfortunately tend to have like a lower IQ and like low impulse control. And there are high functioning sociopaths that have like a higher IQ and like high impulse control. And I think the thing that separates these two people is the fact that one person is willing to act on their, you know, like, you know, horrible, like violent, whatever urges. And the other person is willing to incorporate that into a, you know, a healthy part of their life to make themselves a functioning member of society. Like this woman, that's a lawyer, like, well, I know a few lawyers actually, (laughs) um, like she's like, yeah, like, like I use it for good. You know, the guy that works in, as a doctor, I use this for good. Um, there is a teacher and she's like, yeah, I use this for good. Like she will call like because I, I wish that I had a teacher like that, that like saw, you know, neglect and was like, no, I'm going to fight for this child and I'm going to get you out of your mom's custody because like your mom is clearly neglecting you. Like yeah. she's like, nope, I do not care. I will help children. So it's yeah, like she's willing to like rock the boat. You know, she's willing to like, you know, throw <laughs> throw the Monopoly board up and be like, nope, <laughs> this is done, yeah. done, done. Yeah. You're done. You're done. She almost fought one of the mothers because um, this mother sent her kid to school with hair not done, teeth not brushed. And then she took out a comb and she braided this girl's hair. And she was like, I don't give a fuck if, if the mom has something to say to me. You sent your school, you sent your, um, sorry, child to school with lint in her hair. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not okay. You know, so um, <laughs> yeah, like like there are some people that have this disorder that are doing great in the world. And um, obviously you only hear about like the people like what's his name? Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer that are like eating people. Like, I don't who think the fuck he was a psychopath. People? Yeah, but there, yeah. there are other ones. Ted Bundy, sure. You know, they're a couple. Sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, so I, I, mm-hmm. I recently spoke with a psychologist who was like talking about like, uh, you know, CEOs or something being psychopathic and stuff. And she was like, yeah, but, you know, some slipped through or something. And I was like, no, they didn't slip through. It's not like they got to be CEO because they just were able to pull the wool over like thousands of people's eyes. You know, (laughs) like they got they got there because because of their psychopathy you know whatever it was like their ability to understand you know like the the way things work or whatever or to understand how the the way people work like the to think that she her assumption was if you're a psychopathic ceo you're basically you know like an imposter you're just going to run the business into the ground because you don't know what you're doing and i just thought you know like i wish it were that easy i wish i could just become like a CEO, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like, people, I wish that people were so yeah. easy to trick, you know, but the truth is they get to these places because they're competent. Or people that think that I have no feelings mm-hmm. and I have depression and anxiety and they're like, well, how can you be depressed if you don't feel anything? And I was like, I never said that I don't 
feel anything. I said that I have a limited range of emotions. Yeah. Like maybe I say sometimes like, oh, no, I don't feel this. or I don't feel that. But what I'm really talking about is emotion. Um, so like anxiety is a physical response. Like I'm my, you know, I'm getting sweaty. My heart's beating. I'm thinking of like, oh my God, how am I going to get another sister situation if this happens? You know, like it's like thinking like, you know, what could happen if A, B, C, and D happens, you know, or um, depression, just like laying in bed all day and like crying, you know, like, okay, yeah, I'm depressed because, you know, I have shit to be depressed over, but I'm not like, you know, laying in bed and like, like, it's more like, you know, I can't stop the tears from coming out of my eyes. The tears are just going to like come out of my eyes, you know? So I'm human and I feel these human emotions but I don't feel the positive ones. Like the negative ones are super easy for me to feel. Loneliness, anger, you know, sadness, fear. Um, I can feel that. Not, fear, not not all the time, but yeah. Because um, sometimes I'm like, okay, this person does this and I'm going to do that. So like, it's not really like, like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. It's like, I'm so scared and I'm going to walk around with like this to protect myself, you know? So yeah, but um. I think there's a difference between feelings and emotions. And I think that just because someone might feel anxiety or might feel depression, that doesn't mean that they can also, you know, feel happiness and excitement and this and that, because unfortunately, I don't know what happiness is. And like, I laugh a lot. And like a lot of people, they think like, oh, Cassie, she's happy. She's a happy person. If they don't know about my diagnosis, because I laugh a lot. And I'm like, no, like I'm fake laughing. Like I fake laugh to make other people feel comfortable around me. And sure, some people can be like, well, aren't you manipulating them? Because, you know, if you're sad, why don't you just be sad? And it's like, because then no one will be around me. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like if I'm sad and if I'm just like, I feel nothing, my life sucks you know, yada, 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 who will be around me? And like, unfortunately, like we live in a world where like, we need other people. Like, even if I live in the woods by myself, I will still have like cell phone reception because like, you know, we need other people for certain things. So yeah, I think, I think neurotypicals behave more sociopathically than actual sociopaths. Like even when um, a girl was like, hey, like, you know, can you give me some advice? Like, how do I manipulate my boyfriend? And I was like, um, well, I am not a good liar because in order to be a great liar, you have to remember your lies and my memory is shit. But if I really am trying to manipulate someone, I'm honest with them because people never, um, people never expect honesty. And like the best way to like get what you want or like manipulate someone is just to be honest with them. And it's like so crazy because like people think like, oh, like you have to lie or you have to do this or you have to do that. And it's like, no, like I just I just like I'm like, hey, I need twenty dollars for McDonald's. Like I'm not going to be like, oh, like like I this and I that. And like, you know, just like honesty goes a long way. And like people that think that like people like me are lying all the time. It's like, uh, no, people expect people to lie all the time. We don't live in a world where people expect uh, people to be good to them. We live in a world where people expect people to be bad to them. So if someone is being honest and if someone is like saying like, hey, like I struggle with this, I struggle with that. People are more likely to be like, okay, yeah, I want to be your friend. I want to help you, you know, like, uh, so I don't know. Like, it's like crazy because I was like hiding about hiding like my diagnosis for like, I got diagnosed when I was 25. So I, I hit it for like years. And then when I stopped hiding my diagnosis, that's when I started, you know, getting followers and getting people wanting to talk to me and like, you know, people wanting to be my friend and like people saying, oh, I'll date you. Like the most dates I've ever gone on in my life, even though, yeah, it wasn't, didn't pan out to be anything was after my diagnosis, hmm. which is like mind blowing. Cause I thought like, oh, okay. Like I'm going to hide this, but, um, but yeah, like it's crazy. It's crazy that people think that like everyone with this disorder is like um like you know 100% like emotionless or like 100% you know a lying, you know, piece of shit because then there are people like me that are just like, yeah, I think about beating the shit out of people. And people are like, "Oh, I think about that too." 
you know, so it's like, it, it's, uh, it's way better to just be, you know, honest. And it sucks because like, when I was like, I used, I wore all pink for like 10 years. Like I was wearing literally nothing but pink and I was trying my best to be like happy, you know, positive person. And like people were like, oh, you know, what's wrong with you? And now that I'm wearing like black and I'm like, you know, being as honest as I can be, you know, because there's like my therapist told me like not to say certain things. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say certain things, but like as honest as I could be. And like now it's like I just did a thing with Jubilee Media um and like I never thought that they would you know be want me on their channel and they're like yeah come on our channel like so I don't know like I think so sociopathy is grossly misunderstood I think that people need to understand that it is on a spectrum and that there are people that have jobs and there are people that have families I spoke to a housewife um and she makes little she's not a big content creator but she makes like little housewife videos Mm -hmm. on TikTok And she was like, I will never love my husband in a neurotypical way. I would know, I will probably never love my kids in a neurotypical way, but I will die for my kids. I will, you know, respect my husband and I will, you know, show him love. And she tried telling him this and he was like, no, you love me because he doesn't know the difference because Mm -hmm. like she expresses love through actions. She's not just like, I love you because anyone can say, I love you. There are guys that have told me, I love you. I want to be your boyfriend. And I'm like, okay, prove it. Like, like, and then they can't even go, you know, four weeks without, you know, wanting sex for me and then cursing me out or dumping me when I don't put out sex. So I'm like, you don't love me. You sent me a message saying that you love me and you wanted to be with me. I said, okay, let's do like, not even, I didn't even want him to spend money on me. Let's go for coffee. Let's go to an art museum. Let's, uh, you know, go to, you know, walk around. Like there's this, uh, there's this, all these places in New York city that you could just like walk around and see. And they're just like, Oh, it's cold outside. You know, why don't you come over? And I don't want a guy to hold a frame in a relationship unless I get to know him, you know, and they're not giving me enough time for me to get to know them because they're just like, trying to put me in situations where they can have the frame and like I know what they're doing because like what is it, the it is frame? A frame where they have power over a situation I oh, can okay. google it I don't, I don't think that's the like correct um definition but like you know I don't put myself alone in cars with guys that I meet yeah. for the first time okay. I take an uber yeah. you know like I'm not gonna go to their house and they're just like why don't you come over why don't I pick you up and I'm just like because you can pick me up lock the door and pull out your dick then what I'm supposed to do you know or like do you want to come on my boat like go on your boat in the middle of the ocean like no I'm not going to do that on the first day and I've had like very like because I consider myself to be an unattractive woman Uh, I know that I shouldn't put my down myself down but like I've had guys like since coming out about my diagnosis I don't know if it's because like they want to like you know tell their friends or whatever Mm -hmm. but I've had like really attractive guys like um you know try to talk to me and say oh I'm gonna take you out on my boat or like I'm gonna fly you out and I'm just like no I don't know you why would I get on a plane to go meet a stranger that I don't know I don't know what your living situation is like I don't know who's gonna be there why would I do that and all these girls on Instagram we're talking about oh I'm getting flown out I'm getting this I'm getting that you don't know what's happening when when that happens you know like and a lot of these girls are like getting raped or like being paid to do like hor- horrible things and then they're like oh I went to LA or I went to Germany or I went to London and I'm like okay but what did you do in those countries <laughs> like yeah so I am um, I think I, if I do get a boyfriend well not if hopefully when I do get a boyfriend you know and that turns into you know husband I think I prefer I would prefer to be with a guy that is unconventionally attractive or ugly mm-hmm. because I feel like you know it's what's in the heart and what's in the mind that matters because a lot of these like you know, attractive men, like they play so many, you know, mind games. And I think for a girl that maybe they on online, I probably look very desperate and very sad and very pathetic. And then when they talk to me and they realize like, oh shit, she's not as dumb and, and you know, desperate and pathetic as I thought she was. It like, like you said, like people are comfortable. I don't know. Sorry, I forgot what she said. But like, like people are comfortable with like, you know, their perception of like how they think you are and whatever. And then when they meet you and they're not, because he was like, oh, I'll fix your teeth. 
I'll get you veneers, you know, come to, to a lot of guys in Cal- come to California. And I'm like, okay, can I get to know you? If you really like me, you would pursue me. You would, you know, pr- pursue, provide and protect, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm not going to go somewhere for some guy that says that he's going to fix my teeth when like, he's not willing to talk to me for like more than a week without me sending him a picture of my vagina or my titties or my butthole. Like, and I'm not going to do that. That That's what they want. They're like, they're like, Oh, well, you know, we've been talking for a few days now. Can I get a t- picture of titties? I'm just like a few days <laughs> you want a picture of my mammary glands. I don't know you. Where is this picture going to go? Yeah. What like like in my mind, what's gonna happen is he's gonna be like, ha ha, look what I got this bitch to send me. You know, mm-hmm. oh look at her titties, look at her pussy, look at her asshole. Like, and my friend, um, this guy that I used to be friends with, he was like, wow, like, do you have a lot of male friends? And I was like, no, I don't. He's like, that's exactly how those conversations go. Like the girls that send them these nudes, they when they're hanging out with their friends they show their friends these nudes and I didn't even know that that's how it, you know what happens or whatever and then he was just confirming what I, you know my fears or whatever I thought and I was like yeah I'm glad I didn't send pictures like that because that's what would happen but it sucks because I'm now I'm I've seen this like hit the wall because in like I hate like honestly I wish I was a lesbian because like dealing with like heterosexual straight men is like very annoying because mm-hmm. um, they think like, oh, you're during your 30s, you've hit the wall, you know, oh, and you're fat, like, oh, and you're dark skinned. It's like I have the trifecta of uh, bullshit that guys don't like or whatever. And um, just because you say that I hit the wall, that means that I have to send you pictures of myself naked. That doesn't make any sense to me. And there's girls that do that. And that's fine. And if they feel comfortable, that's doing that. That's 100% fine. I'm not knocking anyone that sends nudes to people that they like online. But like the fact that they don't think, because I've also seen videos of girls crying when guys post their nudes online, you know, because these are not like OnlyFans girls. These are just like regular girls that are like me, where they're not conventionally attractive. They're overweight. They might have autism. They might have PTSD. You know, they have some type of mental health issue or, you know, physical health issue. Uh, One girl in a wheelchair, she sent complete nudes with her face included to some guy that was like yeah I love you I li- I this I that and then he showed it to his friends like oh look at the- what I got this bitch to send me you know so it's like no I'm not gonna do that and it sucks because maybe there are guys that like would date me if I did that and maybe they wouldn't send it to their friends or post it online but like how am I supposed to know that like they're like it's not like it was because my mom told me she was like oh if I because I'm trying to rebuild my relationship with my mother now. And like, she kind of is acknowledging that she is a bit of a narcissist and she's trying to get help or whatever. No but judgment like, mom... from me. I have a relationship with my dad. <laughs> yeah. Is your dad, does your dad have uh, a narcissist? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Is there a correlation between having ASPD and having narcissistic parents? I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I just have met a lot of people, you know, because imagine how do you get to the place where you feel like you can't develop like a normal sense of self, you know, it could be kind of a genetic thing. It could be like, um, like some other environmental thing, like you got sick at the wrong time as a child or something and that disrupted your whatever, or like, you, you know, your brain's a little bit different or other things happened to you or you got abused or, you know, it could be like various things. But like, I think often like it, it would be difficult for me to imagine like people, th- you know, who had a narcissistic parent just being like completely fine, <laughs> just being like, yeah. I'm good, exactly you know, funny. no issues there. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I, I, I've i also seen a correlation, not just with people with, you know, ASPD having narcissistic parents, but also having digestive issues where they have like IBS or they have Crohn's or they have acid reflux. And I, I don't know if it's from like the stress of like masking, because like, I do believe that antisocial personality disorder and people that are on the spectrum of antisocial personality disorder are neurodivergent just like people that have autism, just like people that have uh, ADHD. Like I I think probably 40 years, not even 40 years, maybe like five, 10 years from now, people will have a better understanding of this disorder because people used to think gender was binary. And now we know that gender is on a spectrum. People thought that autism was just, you know, high functioning, you know, low functioning. 
And only the low functioning people were getting diagnosed. The high functioning, they called it Asperger's, you know, yeah. people with Asperger's back then. Um, they were like, okay, you're fine. You're just a little autistic, you know, no therapy needed for you. And these people would like end up killing themselves in their 40s and 50s because they even like, I, you know, I'm high functioning autistic, I guess high functioning functioning sociopath, high functioning autistic, but even I have support needs, you know, they might be, uh, I don't have high support needs as someone that's low functioning autistic, but I have, uh, you know, support needs still. Um, and I think this disorder will, you know, people will have a better understanding of it when more people come out of the closet about it. Um, I think a lot of people are just walking around undiagnosed with ASPD and they're just thinking, oh, well, like, I just don't feel that much, you know, or maybe there are people on the extreme end of the spectrum, especially men, because I feel like it's a lot easier to live with this disorder as a female because it's easier to like mask. And also a lot of women don't really hurt people physically, like yeah. women hurt people mentally, emotionally, um, spiritually. <laughs> <laughs> but not really like physically. Um, and the reason I think more men are diagnosed is because uh, men hurt, you know, people physically. So you can be like, oh my gosh, he did that. Like he's a fucking sociopath, psychopath or whatever. But like there are women and this is like so crazy because like I used to talk to this girl and she would talk to guys online, get them to fall in love with her and then be like, oh, I can't be with you. I have a, I have a husband, you know? So she'd be like in these like, mini and like her husband was like oh it's okay like you're just talking to guys it's fine and I'm like dude <laughs> you know like how are you okay but she was just talking to guys she wasn't meeting them in real life but like these guys didn't know that she was married they didn't know that she was in you know a relationship and that she had a child so yeah like there are women that have these uh, traits but it's not really obvious you know or like someone I recently when I was in Florida, I was uh, going to a church with a girl and she told everyone, she was like, oh, Cassandra's a fucking sociopath. And I was working in the um, like the soup kitchen, right? And like, they're like, oh, like, and she's been feeding like homeless people. Like, who knows what she's been doing to the food? And all I could think was like, what is wrong with you? Like, like, she was like, well, why are you doing this job if like, you can't feel anything? And I'm like, I don't have to feel anything to in, in, or, in order to help people. Like, like, I just need to like help people, you know, and like they had a camera everywhere and they reviewed like they they um they kicked me out from uh, the soup kitchen, which was like, wow, OK. And they reviewed all the footage and they're like, no, she wasn't doing anything like you were the one that was on your phone and, you know, not really like doing anything, you know. So like because I was more like a uh, hard harder working than her she didn't understand that she was like oh and you don't you don't get anything out of this because like she's posting pictures of herself you know at the soup kitchen helping people you know everyone's like oh she's like a really good person she's working at the um clothing pantry and the food pantry and she's like posting pictures of herself helping people with food and stuff like that quoting bible scriptures and stuff I didn't post myself doing any of that like recently I posted myself helping a homeless woman just to prove to people that like I do mental health advocacy work because they wanted proof right um but yeah she was like she couldn't understand that because she did it for like likes on like the gram and I did it because like I just I don't know I don't want to go to hell like like I feel I'm scared almost that I'm going to go to hell but then also um my new you know the therapist that I have recently she was like of course you think most people are pieces of shit because you've experienced pieces of shit as a child yeah. you know like like I'm like she was like I'm surprised that you haven't done you know any of the demented sick like fucked up things that was done to you because like like you would actually and I don't think anyone would be justified hurting other people but like 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 uh having like like sick fucked up shit happen to you as a kid and then saying I'm going to abstain from sex until I find someone that loves me Usually women that go through what I go through go in the opposite direction and that's no fault, you know, to them or whatever, but they go into porn or they, you know, do OnlyFans or they just like, you know, like fuck a lot of guys because they're like, well, you know, I don't care. Like, like, you know, this is my body. People, you know, violated me and, you know, I'm going to, you know, go into sex work because at least I'll get paid for it, you know, and that's fine. But 
um, when people, you know, like me or say like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to abstain from it until I can find someone else. I'm the crazy one. Like someone until I can find someone to love me, you know, they're like, oh, like what's wrong with you? Like, why aren't you out there? You know, just do a hookup, see how you feel. Maybe you'll feel something. And I feel like, I don't know how it is for most people, but like, I feel like if I were to hook up, it would just be like, uh, I would just be skipping all the steps. Like, like I want to feel connected to someone. So instead of like building an emotional connection or a mental connection or, you know, a, a romantic connection, which the mental connection is pretty much all I need. But instead of trying to, you know, get to know them and, you know, do it in the way that makes sense to me, people just skip all those steps and they go straight to sex because they're feeling lonely. Like, yeah, I'm fucking lonely, but I'm not going to just be like, I'm lonely. Who wants to fuck me? Because then it's like, that's just fucking. That's not making love. And like these guys are out here saying, oh, fem cells aren't real. It's, it's, it's not a real thing because like, like girls can get dick. Like, like anyone could get fucked. And th so there's some people that tell me they're like, you're fuckable. You have big lips. You have big boobs. You have a big butt. Anyone would fuck you. And I'm like, I don't want to be fucked. I want to be made love to, you know? So it's just like, it's crazy to me when like, you know, if I call myself ugly and the first thing people go to is like, I guess, features that people pay money for, like people pay money for lips, tits and ass or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> well, that's not you what mean I'm like saying. a plastic surgery, right? Like people. Pay yeah, money yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean, yeah, there are people that have that naturally or whatever. But I'm just saying, like, when I call myself ugly, that's immediately what people go to to, like, make me feel better about myself. Like, like that guy that I was on a date with, like he complimented me on those things. And I'm like, okay, and I think you're really smart and you smell really good. And then he got mad because he was expecting compliments that were physical because mm. he gave me physical compliments. Interesting. When, yeah, and it's like, like I, I complimented on him on things that I actually respect and find attractive about him, Yeah, you know, but he wanted me to probably say something about his height, like he was really tall or whatever. And it's like, no, because that stuff kind of doesn't really matter to me. What matters is like, you know, first of all, I'm like, because of my autism or just in general, I don't like bad smells. Mm -hmm. That's one thing about living in the hood that like, like also makes me really angry is that my building smells like weed. And I don't uh, like the smell of weed, you know, so I'm, I have like 12 Glade plugins, you know, <laughs> like all around. And I um and I have the ones that you put on the wall, like the the spray and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, like like he got he was mad and he was like, Well, I, I gave you a compliment on, you know, your phys physical attribute. Ugh, I don't know how to say that word. Um, I expected you to give me the same compliment. And then I was like, Well, like I that's not what I see when I when I when I when I'm interested in a guy or, you know, like I don't look at like, okay, what does he look like? I look okay. What does he do for work? You know, like, can he, you know, provide for me? Can he protect me? Does he like me? Um, and I'm sorry, I know this sounds like old school, but like, I, I'm Christian. Like, I know the black fingered nose, like, is like, oh, gothic or whatever. But like, I identify as Christian. So like, um, yeah, like, I, I, I fall more into like the gen gender roles or whatever, even though like, I like, for example, like, I think, um, I think the church should accept LGBT people and trans people. And then there's some people in the church that are like, oh, no, we shouldn't do that. And I'm just like, who the fuck are you to judge on people on how they love? You know, like people yeah. should be able to love whoever they want to love, you know. So I don't know, but it's it's hard, like being you know, Christian, autistic, sociopath. You like you don't even you know hear that every day. And then like trying to date and like trying to not be a femme cell, but also, you know, just wanting, I don't, I'm not even saying I'm waiting until marriage to have sex because obviously I'm not a vir virgin. Like my virginity was taken from me. I didn't have like a choice or whatever, but like, I would like to choose like who I consensually had have sex with, you know? So it's like, sorry if I'm like talking too much or like, not making sense i no, you're making I don't all the sense most. in the world and you're not talking yeah. too much i mean it's interesting to kind of hear your perspective about these things and um i don't know i i think that these are like true issues or something and and 
I think that it's great that you're shining light on like, not just, you know, the, the issues specific to sociopaths, but exactly what you say, like Christian sociopath, <laughs> you know, like yeah. heterosexual, yeah. yeah. Femme cell, you know, you know, et cetera. Like these, yeah, are, these no. are just kind of your, your things. And I think it's like, um, you, you used a, um, a word that I haven't heard before support needs. Oh yeah. And support I, needs. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people sometimes kind of get, uh, feel like some type of way when other people are like, here are the things that I need, you know, like, well, like a lot of people don't get what they need or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's often a reaction. And sometimes I think, you know, why are we kind of being like trying to shame people about some of that stuff? You know, like you, you, you have, you, you have your specific kind of way of interacting with the world and it's you know everybody has you know I guess like um like it, the world changes like everybody has to like learn to relate to the world and I think that mm -hmm. it, it's it's good you know I was telling you before about how I'm taking a bass class upright bass and one of the comments that that he said is like bring the bass to you like why are you leaning towards to the bass mm -hmm. and i often yeah. think that that we we should do that more with the world like bring the world to you you know like why am i you know constantly accommodating to the world maybe there are more people like me where it makes more sense to bring the world to us you know like yeah yeah i do just arbitrarily the way it is it doesn't always make sense or something Exactly, exactly. And I was trying um, to talk to my mom about this. Like my mom told me that my problems are first world problems. And I was just like, no, there are women that are going through the same things I'm going through. Because I see um, women that make TikTok. Like, I do TikTok India, TikTok Africa. Like I look at women in all different parts of the world. Mm. And um, yeah, there was a there's a woman that went to jail for killing her husband. Mm. He married her when she was a child. She had so many, you know, children for him and eventually she just couldn't do it and she killed him. And in the interview, um, they're like, well, how do you feel like why, you know, do you regret killing him? And she was just like, no, no. Like he, 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 he took advantage of, of me when I was a child. Yeah. I had, you know, children when I was a child. And once I became an adult and I realized what was happening, like I look, I viewed this person as a monster and I didn't want yeah. my children to have a father that was a monster. And um, she's currently labeled a sociopath. She lives in Africa and everyone is like, no, like they locked this woman up for killing her rapist and they're calling her a sociopath. Yeah. Like, no, she just couldn't deal with it anymore. Or women in India, they're having their own like feminist movement over there. And there are a lot of women that are like, no, like I, you know, you know, on the autism spectrum or I am this or I'm that. And then people are like, well, you're a woman. So get married and have children, you know, and it's just like people are different and not just people are different, but people have different mental health I issues. And just because someone lives in the first world or the third world, that shouldn't you know, make their mental health issues any less valid, you know, like, like people have support needs and support needs isn't like a first world problem. There are women all over the world that are not getting their, you know, needs met, whether that be, you know, mental health needs or just like basic human needs of like shelter and safety and water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they develop psychopathy also, but I think um, there's a difference between sociopathy and psychopathy. Like, sociopathy are people that develop this disorder you know through traumas of society and then psychopathy has to do with like the mind the soul because like i think like size like study of the mind you know the soul psychiatrist yeah so i don't know like if they're you know sociopaths psychopaths like sociopaths are they say made and psychopaths are born like they're just born like that mm -hmm. so that's why i say i'm a sociopath i'm not a psychopath yeah but i i agree with you on that oh no the fun fell like, oh no okay great right. we're good now sorry and i apologize if i pronounce anything wrong because um i grew up in the caribbean in the south so it's like some things i say are like southern some things i say are caribbean but i'm trying to like have american dialect yeah i don't know i haven't noticed anything okay um but yeah, I think it's amazing that you wrote a book and um, hopefully like you are able to like practice. Well, you said you still practice law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. 
um yeah like like because this i don't think people should be discriminated against like the diff differently sentient i don't know how to say it like discriminated against based on the way that their brain is wired like to be a bad person you have to do bad things you know you can't just think bad things to be a, a bad person you actually have to do bad things to be a bad person and i think that's the difference between like someone like me that like has like you know negative intrusive thoughts and like someone that actually acts on their negative intrusive thoughts because like I'm trying to get help for it because like I don't want to be you know a person that walks around and thinks about you know people <laughs> you know <laughs> so like yeah I want to like one day like I mean technically my diagnosis is autism alexithymia and traits of ASPD so yeah just want to be like happy and positive one day and feel positive emotion that'd be great or even like honestly I would date I would date another autistic sociopath I would as long as he wasn't I don't think I don't know though men are different though not all men but like as long as he didn't cheat on me or you know manipulate me but I think I think two people that have ASPD that are in a relationship they'd probably like you know test each other or like maybe if they're not on the same level IQ wise, probably like, you know, try to like manipulate each other. So like, I don't know how that would go, but I think I would be like more comfortable with someone that has my diagnosis because then they'd understand me and I'd understand them. But I don't know. It will be interesting to see. It would be, it would be. Cause I, I used to just want to like be with someone that looked like Steve Urkel, like for a long time. Like Steve Urkel was like my if if I found someone sexy who would look like Steve Urkel, like the young then, version like, or like the actor now all grown up or whatever. The version of him when he was with Laura. So like, I think he was like eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Oh. Yeah. Um. I guess like I'm in my thirties, so like I guess thirty year old Steve Urkel. Um. But now like I'm open to guys that look like Steve Urkel or Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> filled in from the big bang theory uh -huh. yeah because like um there are like so few like black male intellectuals so i'm just like okay i'm just gonna like open it out more so that i don't die alone i i bet i bet you're not gonna die alone <laughs> oh my gosh i uh that is my fear um uh -huh. actually if i if i do have a fear because i've been alone for 30 years now so I keep on thinking like, oh my God, like another 30 years by myself, like how am I going to survive? Like, what am I going to do when I get old? And like, you know, I start losing my memory or like I start, you know, physically declining. Like I, I would like someone, you know, partner in life to like pick up the slack or whatever. And um, I would like to make a baby, you know, and some people are like, well, why? Like, how do you know that you're going to love the baby? And like, I don't know, I just want to like give, I, th I think since I, I didn't really have a childhood. I didn't get to like be a child, you know, um, as far as like being innocent and blah, blah, blah. Like I would like to like, you know, have a child and like give them the best, you know, childhood that they can, you know, have or whatever. Like, I don't want to say I want to live through my child or whatever, but I don't know. Cause that would be a bit narcissistic, but like, I definitely would probably be a helicopter mom if I did have a kid, just because like, I don't know I just I, I I want to have a kid but I want to have a kid like in a healthy dynamic yeah yeah so I don't know I don't know if that will like I do feel like I'm gonna die alone because I am not like stereotypical you know pretty girl and it would be a lot easier if I were because then maybe I can find a man that is attracted to me that doesn't just want to uh you know what's it called it and quit it yeah like maybe <laughs> i find someone that would actually like it and stay you know yeah yeah because that guy that um i had the long distance relationship with like i met him twice and i was like oh this is gonna be something and then he was like okay this is our anniversary we've been together for a month and he wanted to like hook up and i was just like oh, no like if you really love me you will wait one more month i promise you and i was gonna like i was gonna really like if he waited one more month, I was like, okay, let's make love. Let's be together. You can be my boyfriend. But he was like, no, I'm not going to wait one more month for you. Who are you? I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't want to be used, you know, because I spent most of my life being used for sex. So, yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever find anyone that will like be willing to to be with a woman that doesn't know if she's capable of love or whatever. But it's not like I wouldn't be loving them because like like I know women you know with ASPD that have husbands that they literally don't know the difference because like they have sex with their husbands almost every day and they make food for their husbands and they cook and they clean and like like this lady she's like yeah like I'm with him because he gave me this beautiful baby you know and like that's that was her goal you know she wanted that and she got that and she's doing what she can to maintain that and like he's like you know she's like well I I don't love you in the neurotypical way and he's just okay and I was like oh that's actually goals like <laughs> it doesn't sound perfect or whatever but yeah like I would love to find someone that would be like yeah it's okay that you will not love me in a neurotypical way I will still protect provide you know for you and you know make you you know my wife or whatever yeah and I'm fine with going 50 50 when I say like provide or whatever it's just like coming from like you know that stupid heteronormative like Christian thingy but like I'm willing to go 50 50 for someone that was like willing to like get married and have kids but that's the thing a lot of guys don't want to get married and have kids anymore because of you know they see their parents get divorced and they're just like well I don't want to get divorced like my dad um or I don't want to like be a single mom or whatever you know women or men you know have for not getting married um I don't know why marriage is important to me because it's like why would you marry someone that you don't love like why would marriage be important to you if you don't know what love is and I think it was important kind of because of that, like, just because, like, I, there's not the emotion there. So I feel like I need that, like, ring to, like, you know, have that, like, I don't know, like, stability or something. But there are people that are stable that don't have rings. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. We can, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully I don't end up the next 30 years by myself. Like I, I thought about it and I'm like, if I'm 60, I obviously do not have any plans to do this, this but if I'm 60, oh my gosh. And if I'm, I, I'm 60 years old, never had a boyfriend, I think then I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm going to take a boat and go to the sea and just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Live my life on water by myself. Cause that, that's how the ending of uh, that show Dexter was, where he just like took oh. his boat and to see. I'm just uh -huh. like, okay, I'll just do that and just be alone. Anyways, this is going depressing. I'm so sorry. No, it's not depressing. I used to have fantasies about like being a hermit or something, you know, being like, okay, I'm done. It's been a while though since I've had a fantasy about being a hermit. So I, I have. I kind of want to be like, look, I think that there are, it's not just like better things on your horizon, but there are different horizons, better horizons for you than the one that you currently see. I I hope so. And I, I tried, like, I pray about it and I try, I try to be positive, but just like all the dates that I've gone on. And I know that the problem is me. I don't think the problem are these guys, the guys. I think it's me because I, 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 they're not used to like someone with so many boundaries and so many rules and it's it's probably annoying but like I have my rules and my boundaries for a reason and I mean I know that I should probably instead of like waiting two or three months I should probably just like give it a month but like someone could lie to you for a month no, people easily. can pretend to be yeah yeah like people can pretend like like when I was in my early 20s I was a babysitter and I wore all pink and I was happy every single day and like no one knew that I had ASPD, you know, but usually after like, I would be able to mask for like a month or two, and then I would just like lose it, you know, and then they would be like, yeah, you gotta go. I can't take care of my kid anymore. Um, and I wasn't even getting paid. Like I was just doing it to like live in really nice neighborhoods. So like, yeah, a guy can meet me and pretend to be everything that I want for a month, especially since I'm making YouTube videos saying what I want. Yeah, he could just watch a YouTube video and be like, yeah, I'm going to be like this. Then I'm going to, you know, fuck her and never talk to her again. So like, yeah, I think I have the two, three month rule for a reason. But I don't know. No one has last those months. So yeah, I have never consensually had sex, which is sad to say, but it is what it is. Hopefully I meet someone, but then it's like, you're a sociopath. Why do you care? Why do you care if you die alone? I don't know.
know. Why do you think I care? I don't know why I care. I don't know why I care. Because you don't want to die alone, right? So you, why do you care about having your girlfriend? Well, so I think that, you know, with with kind of like the sense of self thing, it's not as if like there's no self there. Like the, it's just that I'm not connected to it, you know? So I think that like you being kind of like like a primate primate kind of species you're a member of a primate species right homo sapiens or whatever like homo sapiens are uh they're they're like what do we say kind of tribal or whatever they like they are they're social like we are social social creatures social living living things right we we have these kind of predispositions uh through through whatever like means that we've acquired them and just because you're kind of not connected to other people in kind of the same way doesn't mean that it's it's sufficient to just be you know to not have it like i think about th there's this like small child on instagram who has this disorder where she is uh, like an extremely picky eater Right. And people are always like, just eat the cheeseburger <laughs> about her or whatever. And it's it's not like she her body doesn't need calories. It does need calories. It probably needs broccoli, you know, or it needs yeah. like something. You know, It needs the nutrients that are in broccoli. But she she has like a hard time, whatever. So I, I think of that like just because you, uh, you know, have like difficulty accessing emotions you know, or difficulty accessing the connection that you have with other people doesn't mean that it's not there. Like you probably sense it in different ways. I definitely felt that way with self-expression. It's just because I didn't have like an idea about who I am, you know, had a hard time answering questions like, what is it like to be me, for instance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mean, that is a hard question. Yeah, it didn't mean that there was nothing there. You know, obviously I'm, I'm in some ways the same person I've been this whole time. You know, there's still things that are so similar about like kind of, you know, through themes you know through the decades of my life or whatever and you know preferences that I've maintained and all these different things that I could say you know are me and I just feel differently about them now because I feel connected to them and feel like like when I say a part of me I have like a kind of a more concrete sense of what me means you know so I I like to think of you know, like if you're seeking connection, I don't think that's unusual. I don't actually think there's any disorder in which people don't seek connection at all. You know, don't have like any, <laughs> any uh. need to associate with humans at all. In fact, the one way that we punish people that we think is actually probably too cruel, even more than death, is solitary confinement. Yeah, yeah. Social is isolation. That's what I'm feeling currently because there's no third space. Like, like, okay, I don't know if I had finished this start like uh, uh, probably a couple, probably an hour ago, but my mom was saying that if she had me early in, in life, then she believes I would have had someone, someone by now, mm -hmm. um, just because there were more places and opportunities for people to meet people, um, than there are now. Mm -hmm. And also, um, mm -hmm. and I do believe that one of the reasons why I, I am single and why other women that identify as female in cells are single is because of the avail availability and the access to pornography that a lot of men have. I've yeah. talked to guys that said that they would rather uh, watch porn than have sex with a girl in real life. And I was like, well, why? And he was like, because there's no fear of rejection um you know there's you could you know do whatever as far as the vr goggles are concerned you know you could watch whatever be you know what is it called like first person you know point of view or whatever where you know you can so i was like wow and yeah there's no fear of rejection i think like wow like men are so afraid of of getting rejected that they're not even trying anymore and because a lot of young you know men in their 20s and 30s stop trying as a result, there are female incels. There are women that that will probably never have a long term relationship, mm -hmm. and a lot of um, like people are investing in cat food and like uh, like sex toys and stuff. Like they're investing their money as far as stocks go, um, because um, they there was like a 
you know, prediction that like in, I think they said 2030 or 2040, like about half of the women in America will be single, mm-hmm. you know, and um, you can, I, w- I will find the, the link to that and I'll send it to you by like, cause that's actually like a real thing that um, people were noticing uh, people investing in. Um, and yeah, like it's, it's so sad because it is true. Like a lot of the men that I probably would have you know probably would have dated or maybe I would have had several relationships or maybe even had a husband by now those men that are compatible with me have given up on trying to find a woman and they have only fan subscriptions they bought a VR headset they have an AI girlfriend and they have a fleshlight and they're fine with doing that they're they're they they find that that it's easier to do that than to find a woman that's also compatible with them because there are a ton of socially awkward men that have traits of ASPD or alexithymia or autism or whatever, you know, that me and a lot of other women also have. And instead of trying to find their female counterpart, as far as, you know, um, that goes, they just, they, they rather give up. And back then in the eighties and the nineties, there wasn't, um, uh, there wasn't a substitute for the real thing. You know, there wasn't VR headsets. There wasn't sex, you know, toys for men. There wasn't OnlyFans girls that you can text and that will text you back. There wasn't AI girlfriends, you know. So guys, they had to go out and like, you know, try to meet women in real life because they didn't have anything to um, replace that need. And now guys have something to replace that need. And like what I find, and, and a lot of women are not talking about this, um, there is a female loneliness epidemic mm-hmm. of like women that are subscribing to like men's only fans and you know buying sex toys and like having AI boyfriends and like talking to guys on Tinder and talking to guys on Bumble and just never meeting them. They have you know a long distance boyfriend or they have an online boyfriend that they have for like their emotional needs. Um, the real guy in real life and they just like have no intention of meeting him because they don't want to be rejected because they have like a lot of these girls um they take pictures like this you know and that's that's fine but like like I said my friend that's my ex-friend that's like 300 something pounds she would take her pictures like this she would have a filter she would wear a lot of makeup you know and she would have you know her boobs out and she would look beautiful in pictures and then if you're video chatting with her like you know we are now you'd see that like oh okay like she doesn't look like her pictures but she's not catfishing technically because she's using a you know, pictures of herself, but she's catfishing as herself because she's manipulating these pictures as much as possible. And she knows that she's manipulating the pictures, which is fine, but then that that she's afraid to meet a guy in real life, you know? So she just has, you know, online boyfriend, long distance boyfriend, and she's on, you know, Reddit or she's on Discord identifying as a femcell when she has like five or six dudes that she's talking to on Bumble, OkCupid, Tinder, Plenty of Fish, Match.com, but as if she's afraid to meet them because they don't know, you know, that she, you know, is catfishing as herself, you know, so it it sucks, you know, what's going on as far as, you know, the femcells, the incels, and just neurodivergent people in general because I feel like yes neurotypical people have the same issues that I have as far as like you know being single and lonely and like as a result of being single and lonely you know that triggering my ASPD like obviously that is not good and you know thank god that I do have a you know therapist psychiatrist uh thank god that I live in the first world and I don't have to end up I I didn't end up like that woman in India or that woman in Africa because they're both in jail right now you know because they felt like like uh murder was their only option out of their situations Mm -hmm. and um you know I have a therapist to talk to I have medication to take I have a church to go to so I have uh different outlets you know for you know the way that I feel to try to you know help me you know prevent me or whatever from going over the edge thank god um but i don't think like my problems you know being a femme cell or having autism or asp i don't think that's like first world problems because people are like why are so many people you know autistic or why do why are so many people coming out as being sociopaths is because we have access to medical care that we didn't have access to uh before you know like 
uh, I currently am on, you know, Medicaid or whatever. So like, I have a very low copay when I see the doctor, when I see the psychiatrist and stuff. But like, um, a couple of years ago, like, you know, people, if they wanted a psychiatric evaluation, they would probably get it after, you know, doing something illegal and ending up in prison and then seeing a prison psychiatrist yeah. or, uh, you know, losing their mind and then ending up in the mental hospital and seeing a, you know, psychiatrist in the, in the mental facility or like, like I actually, you know, ended up homeless and, you know, seeing a psychiatrist in a homeless facility and then being like, oh yeah, you have autism at 25 years old. And people are saying, oh, like, what is up with all these late diagnosed autistics? And it's like, because people understand that autism is a spectrum. Like people now understand that antisocial personality disorder is a spectrum. Um, you can be, be religious and have ASPD, you know, like, they're, well, how can you believe in God if you feel nothing? I think that's like more of a reason to believe in God, <laughs> you know, for me anyways, it is um, like, even though like, I, I don't feel like, you know, a love, I don't feel um, that, you know, like, oh, I love you. Like if I were to have a husband or like uh, just what is it called? emotional connection like you know like like I would still want a husband you know and like, you're right because people don't want to be alone like who the fuck wants to be alone you know <laughs> like that's what they do to people to uh to punish them they yeah. put them in the room by themselves and not have them have any interaction with people and I think society is doing that like not intentionally um but like to people like me you know male men and women like me that are socially awkward that don't really have a tribe of people because like I I can't really connect to connect to other women because like honestly I it's annoying it's annoying to have to you know uh do hair and put on makeup and put on a bra and match clothing um you know like it would be much easier if I were a man like I wish that I could uh be a man I'm not transgender I'm just saying like it would just be way easier um I don't identify with being a female. I don't identify, like, like even like, you know, being like a black woman, like, yes, I'm proud to be a black woman, but it's like, I, I chill with other black people and they're just like, oh, this new Cardi B song is fire. And I'm just like, yeah, it's fire. It's so good. And then they're playing it and I'm just like, okay, I feel nothing, but I'm just going to pretend that I like it because I don't want people to know that I'm different because then they're going to treat me like shit. You know, and I don't live in a nice area. I need people to like me. I need people to not fuck with me. Because there are people, I'm not going to say like everyone in my neighborhood hates me or whatever. There's some people in my neighborhood that are so kind to me, you know, because they know that I struggle or whatever. But like, I do chill with them and listen to music with them and like hang out with them. And if I didn't do that, then yeah, they'd probably be like, she thinks she's all that. But like, yeah, I don't feel anything when I listen to music. I just have to be like, oh yeah, this is good yeah you know like it's just food is one of the few things that like brings me any joy it was like one of the few things that makes me feel anything and that's definitely uh not good because I'm overweight you know because I eat too much food but like food is is it is like it makes me feel better like even when I was younger like when I was a child and like my dad and my mom were arguing, like my dad would like give me candy or he would give me cookies and he'd be like, okay, go in your room. And I'd be just be eating candy, eating cookies, trying not to pay attention to them, you know, yelling and whatever. So it's like food has always been a comfort for me. And to like having to like not have food in my life. Like if I was going to be like, you know what, I'm going to be a skinny bitch and I'm going to lose all this weight and be a skinny legend and go on Ozempic and this and that. I think I'd probably be in a darker place. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it sucks. It sucks living in a world where you don't have a, a sense of self. And um, right now I'm, my, I'm myself more than I would usually be, but that's only because I'm tired. Like I only got three hours of sleep because, um, because the lady downstairs was like blasting music. So yeah, but I usually try to like feed off of other people's personality. And right now it's harder to mask when I don't get enough sleep. It's harder to mask my ASPD because um, when I was, when I, when I first moved to New York and I was staying, um, at my aunt's house uh I was able to like mask for like a day or two and then like after a day or two like it like I would just be like 
monotone. I would just be like dull and she'd be like, what's wrong? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. And I'd just be like, oh yeah, I'm fine. Or, and, and then that's when I like started like having to, I'm not like a drinker or whatever, but I had to drink in order to like, you know, tend to be normal or whatever so that she could, you know, not be afraid of me. Cause I remember once, and I don't even know why I was doing this, but I was just like looking at her, but I didn't realize that I was looking at her. I was just like thinking about something else. And then she was like, what is wrong with you? You okay? Like, because my family's from Trinidad. She's like, what's happening? And I was just like, oh my gosh, because the probably not even the day, like hours before that I was drinking in order to make her feel comfortable. And so that I didn't seem like a psycho. And then it's like, oh, I can't mask. I don't want to drink again. I'm in this house with her. So, okay, let me just like, try to like not do anything weird and trying to not do anything weird made her the most freaked out and then she came to my face and she was like you want to start you know it's like getting all crazy and I was just like oh in my mind I'm just processing she's trying to intimidate me because she feels uncomfortable because I'm doing something that's uncomfortable and there's just like this misconception that like sociopaths like have no regard for people's feelings and like in that moment, it's not that I didn't have a regard for her feelings. It's that I didn't understand her feelings. And she was coming from like a place that was like very emotional just because I was looking in her direction. She felt all types of emotions. And then I'm coming from a place of logic where it's like, I can't be myself around you and you're my family. I had to drink and I'm not even a drinker. And now I'm ex- like, I don't have the, the mental capacity to like deal with your bullshit and I'm, I was just like looking at her yelling at me and then she was like you need to get the fuck out and I was thinking was like all I like in my mind like all I did was look at her and then she told my mom she was like oh she needs to take more of her medication because she's just here looking at me and who knows what she's gonna do who knows what she's thinking she just have this blank look on her face and I was just like I don't know I was probably thinking of like eating food or like what I'm going to do to like I don't even know what I was thinking about you know but like she's making it all about her because like my behavior is not neurotypical and I'm aware of that and I try to like you know have neurotypical behavior and pretend to be neurotypical most of the time but sometimes I just can't because I'm just so exhausted and it's that it's those times that I think like you know people like see the mask slipping and they're just like, what the fuck is happening? What is going on? <laughs> and it's like, nothing is going on. I'm not thinking about harming you. Like, I'm not thinking about anything at all, actually. I'm just a blank, like, thing right now, you know? And it's like, okay, well, like, I've even had guys, like, like back in the day, like, when I was like, okay, I trust this guy. I'm going to go to his house, right? Like, I had guys, and they're just like, like, blah 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 you know trying to hit on me or whatever and I'm just like are you gonna rape me because it's like a thought in my mind I'm just like what is happening right now and what if I did and I'm like well then I'd have to call the police like because I have is an I'm just thinking okay what is happening I'm not like oh my god I'm so scared and the guy he was like bitch you're crazy get the fuck out you weirdo you know and it's like maybe it's a good thing that I was crazy because who knows if he was gonna rape me or not you know I wasn't like "Ah," you know but it's weird it's a weird response to say what if I did (laughs) yeah yeah no I've had I I believe that I like as an adult like like because I grew up with such abnormal situations and I was just like unsafe so many times that like maybe on some subconscious level I am attracted to people like that but then when when they're around me like when you know let's say people with predatory traits are around me and I'm unfazed then that makes them like scared because they're like I'm trying to intimidate you why the fuck aren't you reacting oh yeah yeah, and I'm just like I've been there done that I don't have no more no more energy to like to like be intimidated like if you're gonna kill me then do it don't don't act like you're gonna do it fucking do it you know and then that's they're like oh what the fuck like like when I was in the shelter and this girl was like like I will beat the shit out of you and I'm like then do it stop trying to scare me because I'm like I'm scared sick of being scared if you're going to beat the shit out of me beat the shit out of me and she's like oh you think you could fight you're bigger than me obviously you can beat the shit out of me you know like I just I hate 
people that talk shit because it's like it's like I like I have been in situations where I was thinking of, about killing someone that was actually like like you know raping me harming me you know so it's like you're saying you want to beat me up then beat me up as long as you're not going to kill me you know and there's like oh, like why would I kill you I wouldn't put myself in jail for killing you bitch you know and it's just like like they think like oh like like she's acting like she's crazy or whatever it's like no I've been through crazy and that's why like I'm just unfazed now you know I don't know it's just like it it sucks because like I wish I could just like win the lottery and just like literally just live in the woods and not have to like interact with people but what you were saying while you fix your phone what you were saying about before about like how people get even more angry when you don't react that's what happened in the the prison visiting room that's kind of like what i meant to convey is why did it escalate Mm -hmm. so much is because i didn't seem intimidated by her when she came at me and so then it was like what you think you can take me and then i was like nothing like I think I probably said no no I don't think I can take you and that was even worse she was like (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so angry (laughs) yeah and I think that's why people think that we don't like we like oh so sociopaths don't feel fear it's like no like a lot of us have felt fear for so long that that fear response in our brain it just like turns off after a while you know it's like okay like like I acknowledge that this can happen and yeah, it would suck if it happened. But like, it's like if if I was in that movie and the guy was coming at me with a knife or like like saying, you know, like, I'm going to shoot you. I would be like, OK, that's a better alternative than being beat into death or tortured to death. Just yeah. get it over with quickly. And I think that's the thing about people like you or people like me or anyone like that has this thought pattern that like scares neurotypical people is because like like they automatically have this like fight or flight, you know? And for me, I think like that response in my brain, like, yeah, sometimes it's an overdrive when like, it doesn't need to be like, like, yeah. Like sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, they laughed at me. Okay. I'm going to put a hammer in my leather uh, jacket. I'm going to like, like I, um, when I say like, I walk around with weapons, like people think I'm talking about firearms. No, like I literally walk around with like, like tools, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like in my coat thinking like oh my gosh like if someone you know tries to harm me like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do a b and c to them and um and that's like the OCD of just like having you know that like fear response and like overdrive and then like it just like turning off and not e- not even having it at all you know like I don't know what is wrong with my amygdala as far as like like that all all goes because I was just like oh it's just not working properly okay that's another thing that's fucked up I have a fibroid in my uterus and a cyst in my ovary and an o- amygdala that's not working properly but you know what I'm still going to be thankful because at least I'm able to walk at least I'm able to you know speak like I still have to be grateful or whatever it just sucks because like I want to be in love and if I'm you know not in love I want to have a boyfriend I want to have a husband it's like I think I think the biological clock is real I don't know if this is it like this with lesbians like do you want to have a baby like are there some lesbians that are like I want to have a baby because like for me it's the baby thing that's like driving me crazy like my early 30s where I was like nuts I was like okay I guess I'm freezing my eggs hopefully this will kind of like stymie some of this like urge to to get pregnant yeah yeah I wanted to freeze my eggs but it's just so expensive yeah oh my gosh I'm hoping that I have a few good eggs left, but yeah, I think it's just the urge to like, to like have a baby. Like, I think that's what's like driving my urge to want a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, And yes, a woman can have a baby on her own. That's, that's not a problem, but because of like, I guess my religion or whatever, I'm, I would like to, I would prefer to have like a partner, you know, when having a child, just because also like, it would just be easier than raising a child by myself, you know? Yeah um but yeah like whenever whenever I have like those scary thoughts um it's usually a result of like being bullied like I I'm never the person that bullies like maybe like I don't know in junior year I was like I'm gonna bully people and then I was like humbled real quick (laughs) but um yeah like I was always like the person that got bullied and 
then like I remember one girl that bullied me and um okay so I can talk about this now because my therapist said it's okay uh there's certain things that I can't talk about but um but there was this one girl that bullied me and I was getting so sick and tired of her and I grew up in Brooklyn I grew up in New York City and I remember just like following her and then taking the train and then like seeing where she lived and I did this for like a couple months and I don't know I didn't have any ill will towards her I didn't have any ill intention towards her um and then one time she was just bullying me bullying me bullying me and I was like you know if you keep on doing this I'm gonna tell your mom she's like bitch you don't know what my mom looks like blah blah blah. because like she we're going to school in Manhattan she lives in Brooklyn I described to her what her mother looks like I described to her what her sister looks like I was just like because this that you can walk around right you can take the train there's nothing illegal about that right and stalking I don't I'm not gonna say I stopped her because I never like went into her apartment or like nothing like that but like then like that made her back off because she was like what like how does she know this you know I think people like the with this proclivity or whatever was probably good to have like during caveman days because like like the men and probably some of the women I know female vikings were a thing like that was like we're gonna protect the tribe because we can handle this Mm -hmm. like like as far as especially because um one of the reasons why they marked down ASPDs because like I was like yeah like predators should not exist and I'm not going to say anything more than that but like if this was like caveman days or whatever and people are like oh we're gonna go out and the predators I'd be like okay I'll come with you guys yeah and then I would literally do that and just like feel nothing I would just be like we made the village safer Mm -hmm. right so so like like I think those types of people back then like hundreds of years ago obviously I would never do anything like that um and also like I'm a short you know female so like it's not even like I could do something like that but like I think back then like I think people with this disorder were like needed for societies to function because like it's like there for example there are so many veterans that you know are suffering from mental health issues that are suffering from you know substance abuse issues because they killed people during the war and they don't know how to deal with that you know and it's affecting them and like if 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 I were a person that went to war and it was a justifiable war and I wasn't like you know killing women or children or whatever and if it was like you know clear enemy like like for example like when we went over to you know fight the Germans during you know world war I think it was world war ii or whatever mm-hmm. um like like if they allowed women to fight back then if they allowed black women to fight back then I would have went like and I would have definitely killed some Nazis and I would have felt nothing I would have been like yes we killed uh the Nazis that were you know hurting the Jews and the blacks and the gays and whoever they were you know exterminating or killing or whatever word they used like yeah like I would I would fight in a war and I would kill them and I would feel nothing because I would be like okay I'm protecting you know society or whatever but like um yeah I mean that's not a thing like anymore like people well I guess people that fight in war go through this and I feel so sorry for them like I feel I feel like it'd probably be better to like have people with ASPD fight war (laughs) Mm -hmm. than like than like people that are like empathic you know because a lot I feel like there are a lot of empathetic people that fight for their country because they love their country they want to protect you know people in their country and then they come back from war and it like really messes with them because they have to kill people you know during war and yeah like it'd just be funny if there was like a just bunch of people with ASPD because then you just like see the weirdest people going on war <laughs> yeah like that would be cool or, um but anyways I, I'm probably ranting I don't know is um, it, am I making sense? Yeah, you are making sense, but I am getting like really blood sugar. I, I can tell my brain yeah, is shutting yeah, yeah. down. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> but it was so amazing talking with you. It's so like, amazing talking with you. And, you know, yeah. I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks or something, but I'd love to talk with you like in a few months or something, you know, to catch up with you and okay. keep talking. This has been like really incredible. I, I've i loved so many of your stories and your thoughts and just kind of your different yeah. experiences. It's been really enlightening. I really appreciate you coming to chat with me. Thank you so much. And you're going to send me the link thingy, right? Yeah. Th- send this. And so we'll have it on both, both YouTube channels or whatever. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, it was really great talking to you and 
I apologize if I was talking too much. It's just like a great honor to talk to like another person that knows the type of stuff that I go through because there's so few people that like truly understand, you know? Yes, absolutely. I, I think in, you know, thank you so much for all the things that you do for your advocacy, for, for everything that you're doing, helping people and, and being honest about this. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. No problem. All right. We'll and I appreciate soon. you. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> I appreciate you.